Palawa. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? We back. <laughs> we did it again. This is your 145th installment of your present time invest. Case get it. We on a war path. Oh, the price is going up. Hijack can't buy their way out of this, man. We on 145 to go. A wow. A wow. How you reeling, cops? No major war. Nothing to see here, boss. Nothing to see here, boss. Man, how y'all doing, though? I mean, I would tell y'all all it took to get here, man. <laughs> How much the hijacks been hijacking, but I know you're going through it too. And the simple fact is that we here, you know, we on a war path, boss. The cool say, yeah, we talking about a Naga priest king that's separated, you know, from these treaty making. Treacherous niggas, man. Treacherous niggas, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, we bringing it back to the Cherokee, right? And what does all this got to do with Genghis Khan? And what's this got to do, you know, with the Chikora? Yeah, Shakora. Remember the Shakora? All right. We're talking Shakora. We're talking Shakora. Hang in there, man. What does it got to do with Marvel, man? <laughs> What's it got to do with the Marvels, man? And the Shikamaga War. What does Marvel have to do with the Shikamaga? I mean, let's let's bring it on home, man. <laughs> 145, man, we got to bring it on home now. All right, so look, man. America's been at war, you know. <laughs> Quite a while. Look at the red, right? And do we ever really have any true peace time? And it's their piece, our piece. Hmm. Hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, hi, Jack. <laughs> they say 222 years out of 230. Nah, come on, boss. We know where it started. It started right here at home with the Shikamaga. And it kept going with the what? Shikamaga, Shikamaga, Shikamaga. Shikamawa, 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 Shikamawa. So you say, who's he? Shikamawa, right? Okay. Oh, the native group that separated from the hijacks. That wanted to make peace. The majority of these hijacks wanted to make peace with the so-called Americans, which was the corporation. Which, of course, leads us to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. On the head of Dragon Canoe and Tecumse and the Shikamaga Cherokee. Got it. Because we didn't want to make peace with these hijacks. We didn't want to make peace with the corporation. We wanted our land back. We wanted our millions of acres lost back, man. We didn't want to give up no more land like the Treaty of Fort Wayne did. We didn't want this for our peoples, man. We didn't want this for our weeples, man. We understand Ishmael migrating at the same time, 1785, right? At the same damn time. So we always go over this just to get our get our perspective right, man. That we know we at war while somebody coming in here casually migrating, collecting land. And who is it? Psalms 83 Confederacy. <laughs> These tribes, man, will be confederate against you, Israel, to make the name of Israel no more in remembrance. Remember Ishmael and them, Moab and them? Yeah, we just dug on a treaty of Fort Wayne. What's it got to do with Morocco, man? And why is Ishmael migrating at the same time? That Morocco's getting set up with their harmonics. 
And what does their harmonics <laughs> have to do with the Little Ice Age? This is what we've been asking because several causes have been proposed about this Little Ice Age. Or is it the Big Ice Age? The real Big Ice Age just happened. They say about 1300 to 1850. This is right after Genghis Khan took over the Khan from Prester John. It's an Ice Age after Genghis Khan takes the Khan, right? And it's an Ice Age at the same time that Columbus finds us, <laughs> right? It's an Ice Age at the same time of your Moorish Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787. Khan is an Ice Age at the same damn time that you're going to war right here at home. More on more. Yeah, we see clearly, boss, there's an ice age, right? This is during an ice age, but why is it an ice age? Several reasons have been proposed, including <laughs> cyclical lows in solar radiation. So is it, let's go, man, let's play a game. Is it A? Why is, why is there an ice age in America? And I mean an ice age in America. I'm saying my nugget is an ice age. Limit of glaciation, there's glaciers, there's glacial advances, there's moraines, which are retreating glaciers. There's glaciers in America, boss, while the Ishmaelites are migrating during the wars of the stolen land and invaded land. And all this is happening. Hawak curses the land for them, right? We already, get, you know, handling our... <laughs> our uh jacob's trouble right <laughs> so they coming in a while don't make it easy for him hawaii curses the land and makes it the coldest time recorded in over a thousand years and what is this fort wayne moraine right this moraine again is retreating glaciers <laughs> so yeah it's global warming we, we just now getting out of a damn ice age and what caused the ice age was it your mountain of harmonics, Morocco? Did you put some frequency on the earth? Did it freeze over Antarctica, boss? Did it freeze America, boss? Several reasons have been proposed. Heightened volcanic activity, changes in the ocean circulation. Come on, man. When did the ocean just change circulation, man? Because we know... It's going clockwise and counterclockwise, clockwise and counterclockwise. So you saying it reversed from clockwise to counterclockwise and clock, you know, everything just switch. Is this what you're talking about? Your axial tent, tilt, hijack city, inherent variability in global climate. Or here's the real roost right here. Huh? Here's the truth. The decreases in human population. Hmm. Did Genghis Khan cause so much decrease in the human population, or more specifically, Israel, when he took the Khan in 1202, 1203? Oh, the massacres by Genghis Khan. Right. So we're going to talk Genghis Khan as it relates to North America and America and the whole world because everyone felt this, I say. And they also include that with the Black Death, the European Black Death, the bubonic plague, all that stuff, right? Epidemics emerging in the Americas upon European contact, right? This is just a review. Let go. We out of here. <laughs> For my new wave service, man. So they're comparing these emerging epidemics in America with the massacres by Genghis Khan. So we're going to do the same damn thing in Press the John 145. Compare the epidemics emerging in the Americas with these massacres by Genghis Khan, which means who's he massacred. So we got to look and really dig on this battle of the burning sands, man. Because, you know, that's really the turning point of this war happening between King David, Prester John in 1202 and 1203 and Temujin, Genghis, Chinggis. Or Nebuchadnezzar and Nebo defend your boundary, Genghis Khan. All right. 
And if Nebuchadnezzar is the grandson, like we've proposed in previous drops, go get the drops. <laughs> if Nebuchadnezzar is, the, is King Solomon's son and Sheba's son, then whoa. Genghis Khan, you know, has in his mind and on paper <laughs> a right to the Khan. Now, that, that doesn't mean you can be out of order with it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, this is what he's, this is what Nebuchadnezzar, when he's, you know, getting these royals of Judah, you know, he, he's doing that because he is a royal of Judah, being King Solomon's bond, King Solomon and Queen Sheba's son. So, and if Nebuchadnezzar is just a title and Genghis Khan is just a title, then we can see which matches, right? Which, you know, uh, titles are the same people. You know what I'm saying? We got to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Allow So we talking gangs because they talking gangs. We talking European contact, black ass King Charles and them, right? The Portuguese, the swarthy Spaniards. We're talking all this in connection with the gangs Confo. Because this European contact is just a continuation of the massacre and the invasion of this Genghis Khan flow during this more and more war flow. You know what I'm saying? And we know the House of David was divided, which, you know, could, you know, really lead to what we see here with Genghis Khan versus Preston John. We know that, uh, you know, Israel's divided. You got northern versus southern tribes fighting each other. So we know there's infighting happening in the house of Israel and is it happening during these so-called dark ages 13th century type flow right now we gotta also look at our chronologies you know what I'm saying three major chronological time shifts 333 years 1053 years and uh, 1778 years according to um, you know what I'm saying Anatoly Fudimenko did Scalinger and Batavius push our time back in at least three major chronological time shifts. These, all these is in play in the Preston John investigation. See, the Preston John investigation is the hottest thing smoking, man. <laughs> it's the hottest thing because it's going to, one, bring the code back to play because ain't no point in talking Prester or Priest if you're not talking the code of the Prester and the Priest. You know what I'm saying? That's why Hosea 3 say, hey, search for the con, right? Search for... Wow, right? Once you are in order after being in solitary, because Israel sat solitary many days without a king. We're being compared to this harlot because we've been playing the harlot. But Hawaii said, you ain't going to play no harlot no more. You're going to be in solitary. So no other nations could help us. <laughs> Nor did they want to, but they couldn't if they wanted to. We've been in solitary. Without a con, without a priest, right? Your sacrifices don't matter. None of your, you know, sacrificial things matter, man. None of your priestly things matter if you're out of code. You're in solitary, Israel. So when I talk king, you don't even know what I mean, right? <laughs> You've been in jail so long, man, you, you forgot who you are, right? So after you will get out. You know, there is a release day <laughs> where the children of Israel return. This is what we're talking about. This is prophesied. Hosea 3, Jeremiah 30, right? Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 34, Psalms 89. We got this, right? So we're talking Tanakh only sessions, man, right? And the first thing you do when you return is seek Hawa. How do you seek Hawa? You KTC, you keep the code of Hawa, you keep the commandments of Hawa, you start with most high over everything, right? You keep the code, Exodus 20 got us in code. Once you've established your code within yourself, right, then you are ready for an investigation, you're ready to move, you're ready to gom, right, in the Hebrew letters, alphabet, right, you got the LF, the strong power, the bot, the house, right, the strong power enters the house, there's a movement, there's a gom, right? There's a walking. The fourth letter is a door or a doll, D-A-L, Dalit, is the entrance. You go through the portal, the entrance. You walk through it to get your breath, which is your mama. Your inhales the feminine, exhales the masculine. Wah, sixth letter, wah, your security. So as soon as you enter that door, 
that if you walk through that entrance with your tribe, with yourself, you do it every thought you have, every day, every thing you say, like everything is you walking through that portal, man. Every day you wake up, you're walking through it again because you got to keep the code every day, every moment, every thought, right? Huh? We're talking Preston John, so we got to talk code or else this is out of context for you. If you're just here for the information, you ain't here for the vibration, this ain't for you. Get to the back of the class. We on the war path, boss. We on the war path. <laughs> you can't have war without a code. You can't tribe up without your code, man. And you seek the creator, then you seek Dawi, your king, in the end of days. Drop popping off because they didn't let me record this for like at least a, a couple strongs. I've been switching screen recording softwares and everything, man. I'm so happy to be here with y'all. I'm so happy to be here with y'all. Yeah, it's a war path. Yeah, it's the same Nagas that been at war, man. Same Nagas. Cool said. Same Nagas, you know. Keep on going, right? We keep on going. Same Nagas, right? Same Nagas. It's the same Nagas, man, right? I can't I can't make this up. Same Nagas. So when did you just become some homeborn slave? When did you get off a boat from Africa <laughs> and just was a slave on cotton picking cotton? You believe that public school narrative or were you these niggas, you these noggins this whole time? The whole time you've been fighting, boss, and they just replaced you. They just replaced your titles, you know, gave it to somebody else, your names and everything and everything. <laughs> but it's been you the whole time on the front lines, so. What causes Ice Age? <laughs> uh, Massacres by Genghis Khan. Yeah, emergence of these uh, diseases and these people, right? Uh, maybe some of this migrating Ishmael's been doing. Maybe some of this caused the Ice Age, since we're talking about European contact <laughs> and massacres. And, you know, these Ishmaelites ended up tribing up with the Kentuckians. A lot of them went in this Kentucky area at first. And these Kentuckians were fighting against the Chicamago Cherokee, right? And they ended up being the ones responsible for the death of the Comsay. So you can't say that Ishmael had a lot to do with the fall of the Comsay, Tippecanoe, and all this flow that's right here where X marks the spot. And why would they put all this here, man? Tippecanoe has everything to do with the fall of Tecumseh, the battle of Tippecanoe. What does it got to do with Morocco? What's it got to do with you? What's it got to do with Dragon Canoe? In Alabama, <laughs> Alabama where X marks the spot. Is it Alabama or Al Aba Ama? El Aba Ama, <laughs> where X marks the spot. Typical. Saying that right, here we go. Tippecanoe, Indiana, right, <laughs> Tippecanoe, battle, the 
Battle of the Tipping Canoe for November 7th, 1811 in Battleground, Indiana, right? <laughs> Damn. Tipping Canoe, right? Battleground, Indiana, right? Indianapolis, the mecca of all the Indians of India Superior, the Nagas being encroached by Morocco, Moab and them. Being encroached by Ishmael and Ishmael and there. Oh, but they're such great musicians. Typical new. So this battle happened, man. Between American forces or hijacked corporation forces that are part of the Moorish Morocco Treaty of Peace and Friendship, which ain't your peace and it damn sure ain't your friendship. Led by Governor William Henry Harrison of the Indiana Territory and tribal forces associated with Shawnee leader the Kum say Ta Kum Kum means to rise, my life. And his brother Ten Scott Ten Squatawa Ten Squatawa Ten Squatawa Awa commonly known as the Prophet. And this is where the prophet was murdered, man. Because the Kumse went to tribe up some more Nagas in Ontario, up in Canada. to get. He got all the Nagas he can get. And while he was gone, they saw he wasn't there. And they went up against his brother while he was gone. These cowards, man. They didn't want the full force. They saw he was divided. They went against the prophet. And the great... War, a great battle took place, man, and the prophet lost, man. And that was one of the, you know, you know, signs of the end at that time, you know. We did everything we could. The Kumse did everything he could, man, to drive up the cons, man, but he couldn't get everyone to fight against these hijacks because think about it. They were already part of the Morocco Treaty. So, you know, we talked about Push Mataha, or, you know, I believe that's the name of the Choctaw, you know, and this whole conversation between the Kumse and the Choctaw leader. You know, he was like, look, man, <laughs> these these folks, they not, did nothing to us. You know, this is your problem type of thing. This is what it was. It wasn't just some, um, oh, the white man. Nah, it was, we're, we're trying to up with, these niggas, man, we tried to open Morocco. <laughs> and is it because of a bloodline thing or is it, you know, greed, money? It wasn't just that, just a uh, Choctaw. It was, you know, some Muscogees and everything was fighting against us, right? We had our own brothers and sisters, you know, at war against us, man. Because they was promised land, because they was promised this holy mountain. And what does the more science temple know about this? It's a more and more war, Morocco. As tensions and violence increased, Governor Harrison marched with an army of about 1,000 men to attack the Confederacy's headquarters at Prophet's Town, near the confluence of the Tippecanoe River and the Wabash River. You see it coming to life, man. They didn't know we had this source <laughs> to connect <laughs> with what they say in Wikipedia. This is two completely different sources, but look how they match up. And here's the Wabash Moraine. That means glaciers retreating. So this Wabash River was also connected with the Wabash Glacier <laughs> and the Fort Wayne Moraine and the Wabash Moraine <laughs> were all the Moraines. And the Moraines are what? Rocks and soil deposited by retreating glaciers. Yeah. What's causing glaciation in America, Morocco? We got the Wabash right here. We got Tippecanoe right here, right? We got the Wabash and we got Tippecanoe right here. Is it is it coming clear? Is this the year of the dragon? Is this the year of the dragon? Ten Squatawa, brother, the Kumse, man. 
They fought him in the forest. Fought against the prophet. In prophet's town. Tecumse was not yet ready to oppose the United States. <laughs> yeah, the corporation by force. And was away recruiting allies when Harris's army arrived. Tan Squatawa was a spiritual leader but not a military man. And he was in charge. Harris encamped near Prophetstown on November 6th and arranged to meet with Ten Squatawa the following day. Early the next morning, warriors from Prophetstown attacked Harrison's army. They took the army by surprise, but Harrison and his men stood their ground for more than two hours. After the battle, Harrison's men burnt Prophetstown to the ground, destroying food supplies stored for winter. The soldiers then returned to their homes. Harrison accomplished this goal, his goal of destroying Prophetstown. The wind proved decisive and garnered Harrison the nickname of Tippecanoe. So now they call him Tippecanoe the hijack. And meanwhile, the defeat dealt a fatal blow for Tecumseh's Confederacy. And though comeback attempts were made, it never fully recovered. Man. And that was 1811, right? So we got three different sources at play. <laughs> we got the war list happening, you know, with this, uh, you know, wiki map talking about Battle of Tippecanoe with this marching to the arch on the trail of death map <laughs> from walkinginplace.org, you know, breaking down some orientation pies and orientation angelas where we could see the Wabash, we could see Tippecanoe. We can see Fort Wayne and the Fort Wayne Moraine and its connection with Morocco and the Kankaki Basin, which is very important. And look at this moraine, a huge moraine right here. What's it got to do with Chicago? All under ice. <laughs> all, glaci all glaciers. Glaciations. You got the St. Joseph River, man. <sighs> All while Ishmael's migrate. I said, who would migrate during an ice age? The only people that will migrate during the ice age are people that are guaranteed to be a part of these treaties. They say, yeah, it's an ice age, but come on down. It won't be ice forever. Get this 30 million acres, Jack. And look, that's just one treaty. How much did they get from the Treaty of Chicago, 1821? Right. My point is, man, this last little scrap right here. Right. Because the Treaty of Greenville, Treaty of Greenville, Treaty of all this, this set off Dragon Canoe. Right. That led to the Tacoma last stand in 11 or 1811, 1812. Battle of Treaty of Tippecanoe was later 1832. So before that. This is what led up, my night. Like, we was on the front lines. This is what they called us, the Chickamauga, after the Chickamauga River, which was named the River of Death. They just named us after the River of Death, but these are the Cherokee or the Kara Ka, right? We were talking Kara a lot, like the Kara Linus, right? We're going to talk <laughs> some Chikora, which is Kara, Chikora, 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 and connect that with the Kara Linus and the Kara Ka. Kara, Ka, right? Okay, okay, okay. Point is, <laughs> 1811, Battle of Tippecanoe. That set off the Combsay's War, where he started slaying these hijacks. Monaga, you ain't no slave. They just got off no boat, man. You're the copper color racist found here. The tribes found here. And after this point is when these other treaties were established because even though you kept fighting, right, through the 1820s and 30s, no major war means big war. Don't even let them confuse you. That means they just still in land. 1830s, right? You still fighting. 
It's still scrapping. All these treaties were then made one by one. One by one. So if the Fort Wayne Treaty gave up 30 million acres, right, Indiana and all this, man, Illinois, Chicago, <laughs> Ohio, all this stuff, man, the Treaty of St. Mary gave up way more than that, 1818, Wabash, we just got that, saw that, 1840, Tippecanoe, 32. Mrs. Mrs. Sydney, Mrs. Sinwas, <laughs> 1820. I mean, all this is land. All this is land given up. All this is land given up, and this is why they migrate. Who would migrate during the Ice Age? Only someone getting free land. Only someone getting free land, boss. That's all I'm saying. That's all we say. So by the time we wake up, right? By the time... Afterwards, shall the children return, right? You get in cold to seek the creator is to get back in cold to put your guns down. No killing your brother. No stealing from your brother, especially not people, especially not land. Then we could talk the search for Dawi. Now you could talk its correlation with the 1200s and Genghis Khan calling himself David, right? Now we could talk the Mongol flow connecting with the Hebrew flow connecting with the Native American flow. You combine those histories, you're going to hit the jackpot when you see clear that Khan means priest and all this Khan talk they have in the Mongol. Mongol means the great ones. So these great ones are talking about the Khans or the priests. They're fighting for the what the Lord of the Rings, right? And now you're talking King Solomon, Preston John, magical kingdom talk. Now you're talking about the search for Preston John. And this is why they've been searching for over 500 years. And you tell me in the 1700s, in the 1700s, now we're talking about Shikamago Wars, boss? <sighs> really? You searched until 1645? <laughs> and now 1700s, now we got Shikamago Wars? You tell me you got nothing to do with finding President John? You search for 500 years in Asia over there, Ethiopia over there, Africa over there, found nothing, boss. Portuguese put this monument up at the tip of South, South Africa because that's where it was taken off from. And then they said, you know what? We're going to start searching for the Fountain of Youth in America now because they only started searching for the Fountain of Youth in America in the last 500 years. Why? Because they knew it had to be over here. Cause they just found this land, got, got cozy. They knew they was in the land of the priest king, King David. The land of the Hebrew, Kalelu's promised land, man. Promised land. Yeah. These hijacks caused an ice age, like I said. It was the coldest time period in the Americas, man. Where's the North America? They, put, they were ice skating around Virginia, such as such. Look at North America. There we go, there we go. Historians agree that when colonists settled at Jamestown, it was one of the coldest periods in the last 1,000 years. They even had a drought issue in North America during the Little Ice Age. And the settlers arrived in Roanoke during the largest drought in the past 800 years. So you have a full-on plague happening because of this devastation, because of this destruction. There's a largest drought in the last damn near 1,000 years. And it's the coldest damn time in the last 1,000 years. When you're pulling up, settling here in Virginia... You, you got glaciers to deal with. You got ice everywhere, man. It wasn't no cozy period. But Ishmael just kept on migrating. Moraines, Moraines, right? Wabash, Moraines. <laughs> Come. Do you see clearly?
so this battle of Tippecanoe popped everything off. I mean, you know, it was already popping off, but it was a big turning point, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a big turning point for Tacoma. You know, it's a big turning point for the tribe. Oh, who, oh, who is Preston Child? <laughs> yeah, we talking Genghis Khan. Now that we're talking Ice Ages and Genghis Khan, let's go ahead and talk some Genghis Khan. <laughs> Vovatia, WordPress.com. Man, pull up these links, man. Let's just get it from here. We talking Preston Giannis, right? Yeah, we talking Preston Child. Yeah, okay. Okay. You know, we got some of this. Was it a was it a mythical you know, let's get it again, man. I see mentions of Preston John, but I wasn't sure who he was. I've since found out he was a mythical king, Dodge Dodge, yeah, because we're talking about a Hebrew in or near India. We know we're in India superior, right? I said, right? Okay. As long as we know. <laughs> if you know, you know, man. So, so this is a king in India's period <laughs> whom the European church saw as a potential ally against the Muslims during the Crusades. Again, that's their cover story, but I think they're working with the Muslims because the Muslims are already setting up Morocco in America. <laughs> so in 1145 Hugh the Bishop of Jabala in Syria brought some news to Pope Eugenius III he told of the loss of Edessa to the Sunni Seljuk Empire but balanced it out by telling of a victory over the Seljuk one by one Prester John so they knew Prester John was whipping up on all of these hijacks whether they Christian or Muslim that were trying to encroach on the Hebrew promised land, on, <laughs> you know, Jerusalem, right? So, a descendant of one of the Magi and a Nestorian. And again, with Nestor, we're talking old king renowned for wisdom. But remember that, because we'll get it again, don't trip. Which means he believed in J.C., come on, boy. Not even Genghis Khan and the Mongols were confirmed to be Christians. So, again, they're just trying to they're trying to lump it all together because him being a Hebrew, they wanted they need him to appear to their people as a Christian so that they could say, "Oh yeah, we have help. Oh yeah, you know, let's go find this Christian in this Christian nation." But that's why they couldn't tell you that you're in India Superior because then they can't explain why. You would enslave a Christian nation. Why would you be on a war path and cause all that destruction with the Shikamagua, Cherokee, and Tecumseh uh, if they were Christians? So you got to make them savages, Saracen savages. Because if you say you ran up on even Christians, you couldn't go to the crown and tell them that you're invading Christians. So you couldn't really call them that. So you could only make that story up within yourselves to convince yourselves and your people that this dude, this, this person is some Christian. But in reality, you couldn't make it in, a, you know, you couldn't say, oh, in America, this is where we found this person because you, you needed to take this land, right? You needed to take all these millions of acres of land. You couldn't do that from no Christian nation and you couldn't do it from no Hebrew nation. So you made us neither Christian or Hebrew. You made us just some savage, savage, devil-worshipping savage, <laughs> right? Then you could say, oh, it's okay. I can explain to my people that we had to free the land from these devilish savages, demon savages, right? So this is their play, man. It's the hijack playbook. We know this is Cathay. When we keep seeing this Kara Katai, the Kara is the Carolina. Kara means black or melanated in Turkish. We're talking Turks because we're talking Moors. 
And the Katai is the Cathay, whether they spell it with a C or a K. We got that. So we still talking Florida, ball. We still talking China. Yeah. We still talking China. This is the way to China. It's one of, one of my favorite maps, man, because <laughs> the Chinese sell upon this. <laughs> this is the way to China, man, right? This is a map of America and the way to China as men believed it to be, which an old pilot showed King Henry VII in the year 1500. This is the way to China. This is a map of America, man. There be dragons. You think they put dragons on a map for no reason? Because there's also a tiger here, I'm sure. That's for a reason. You think this is a myth mythologies, man? You think dragons are mythological? Man. You think this is China? <laughs> C-A-T-H-A-Y, Cathay, Marco Polo first called China Cathay. So this is Marco Polo's China Cathay. Cathay, right? And this is America. And this is India. I-N-D-I-A. And this is Japan. Because Kapango fits right in between Florida and the mainland. That's the real Japan, but they took it off the map, man. Because this is a map of America. Cathay. Cathay, Kate, <laughs> India. Okay. Okay. So this Khan ruled India. We know Preston John ruled the three Indias. The historical event that inspired this was probably the defeat of the Subju. Probably. So they don't know nothing. They're guessing. They're high, hypothetical. <laughs> all these hypotheticals man but we are investigating for us because they can't do it so they're saying this probably was the defeat of the Seljuk by the Mongol Kara Katai Katai is Cathay Katai is Cathay Katai is Cathay oh yeah oh yeah Cause this is a map of America. Are you an Asia major or Asia minor? So when I talk 1500s, we're still in the 1500s and this is what they say. You think they are giving you some truth today or are they all play play? Are we just in Asia ball? <laughs> uh, it's something about this America before they gave us our globe map, <laughs> this land beneath this meridian <laughs> leads to more worlds beyond the poles. Antarctica's completely mapped out on this map. Antarctica's mapped out also on the David Rumsey map. And no, you don't see no ice on Antarctica's chest ball. But you do see a way through. <laughs> and look how long this goes. This is longer than... All of South America, man. Woo! To get up out of here. We just talking Phoenicia. <laughs> we just talking Tarzanta. And again, what does Tarzanta mean and why would that be in what's called Antarctica today? Tarzanta who? Tarzanta what? Tarzanta. Meaning, holy land, holy ground. Then they tried to hijack the JC story in there. And now it has something to do with Israel and Palestine. But Managa, oh, what a fine. Love to Saku. Tara. Santa is in Antarctica and it's near Phoenicia. <laughs> Golly, right? Underneath America, right? In South America. We talking Terra Fuego, Hotlands. What is Tarzan doing there? What's there today underneath this ice cap? 
holy land, boss. Holy land. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Morocco. You call it a Maxim, west of Maxim. All for ham and kush, man. All for ham and kush, but we see clearly. You can't hijack the cars no more, man, because we see clearly. So, you know. <sighs> we having fun, man. <laughs> we on a warpath. And the price is going up. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, boss. Ah, so let's go. Yeah. So this car, again, is the same as car lining, which means black, black people, or dark people, whatever you want to call it. Katash's cafe, this yellow Tashi, you know, these are just predecessors of the Khans. These are the Khans, the priesthood, who was not at all Christian. So how are you going to name them Christian here, right? When you know they're not Christian, <laughs> the title Prester derives from presbyter and elder in the church, or we're just talking priest. Stop it. There is an un- Verified account of an actual patriarch from India named John visiting Rome, 1122. Now, this would be during, well, within the, especially with the fountain of you, uh, well within the range of, you know, this Raja Hiraja son, David Sauslin flow that we got, right? So, this is all we connected. This is all we connected. Raja Hiraja, Cholas, the Pandy. Sauce. Right, so you got David Sauce, which means menacing look or deadly glance, evil eye. <laughs> Back to the Marvel flow of Babylon and Georgia. Georgia on my mind. Ray Charles done told us. Right before 11. Or before 1302. Now, his father is Preston Johnson. Of course, these are titles like we got before, before 1195. So, again, this is all within our wheelhouse. When we got the 1100s, we're talking 1122 here, which might have been inspired, which might have inspired the Preston John legend, but not John legend. Stop it, man. Stop it, man. <laughs> there was early Christian documents telling of a John the Presbyter. Also, John the Baptist in the New Testament. Love to Yosef breaking down great work live in the ether, man. John the Baptist, because he's, you know, giving his tribe these baths and the fountain of youth. And they're turning back to the age of 32. And this is what the Christians hijacked, created reflections and duplications, and started baptizing people in the ocean water or lake water. <laughs> but that's not the living water. So this Apostle John is based on Preston John. John the Presbyter is based on Preston John. John of Patmos is based on Preston John. John the Baptist is based on Preston John. Johannes. God. 1165, a letter from the fabled John to the Byzantine Emperor Emmanuel Comenius began to circulate throughout Europe. According to the letter, John's kingdom was home to among other beings, giants, pygmies, cyclopses, griffins, satyrs, satyrs. It has a river that curses or that cures, excuse me, diseases. So a river that cures diseases sounds a lot like the fountain of youth. A river of precious stones. You know, back to the San Manuel River, right? Precious stones. A stream that changes flavor. A watchtower from which the entire land can be seen. Anyone there who lies drops, who lies drops dead instantly. So you got a bunch of truth tellers, right? 
a lot of these ideas come directly from other tales of travel in unknown lands like the Alexander romances and stories of Sinbad the sailor. It also describes as the burial place of Apostle Thomas. Shout out to Dizzle Fetty. We're talking town. <laughs> but he was supposed to be somewhere in India. And again, we're in India Superior, who was credited by legend with having preached. Stop it. We're just talking about keeping the code in India, all right? Possibly China. <laughs> now, the only way you can make sense of India, possibly China, is if you know that according to the map shown, to Henry <laughs> the Seventh, Oof. and according to uh, the Moors, <laughs> uh, you're in Africa, boss. You're in Africa. Yeah, Morocco. This is why you want to put your harmonics up, because everything's Morocco to you. Every the whole world is Morocco to you. That's crazy, Morocco. Everything's Morocco, <laughs> even outside the wall, Morocco. Morocco, did you flip the map? Are we on the east and not the west, Morocco? And why is Antarctica, why is it called Australia's Morocco? And why is it Holy Land Tarazanta? And why does it say Terra Fuego in cold Antarctica if Fuego means hot? Morocco, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> We're still in the 1500s. And for some reason, Morocco, the same place you put your uh, pyramid of harmonics and the same place you were stealing all this land, here is labeled India Superior. Here is labeled Prester John. We got some clearer versions of this, but you see it just fine. Prester John, right here, the same place they have their harmonics popping off at. Yeah, Australia's. <laughs> As the bar, hey man, we see clearly, man. The only way to make sense of China and India, my naga, is to know that this is India superior. Even Ptolemy knew that, and this is where you find the great Khan of China or Cathay, which is Prester John, which is why he's on the map, which is why he's on the map. Now we see clearly, which is why he's on the map. And why are you hijacking this area, Morocco? Why are you doing it, man? Why are you doing it? Why are you hijacking the same area? Yeah, because you're hijacking the frequency of the land of Preston John, which caused the damn ice age, man. They want to make sure... You are no more in remembrance, my nuggets. I ain't lying. I ain't making this up. I ain't lying. <laughs> they making treaties. They making treaties. Psalm 83. Confederacy. What does Ishmael got to do with this? Why are they migrating? Because the Ishmaelites are making covenants against you. Along with Edom and Moab and them, Ammon and them, children of Lot and them, they make a covenant against you. They have consulted together with one consent, meaning they agree that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They agree to come and cut you off from being a nation. They agree to take counsel against your treasured ones, Israel. They agree to hold crafty converse against you, Israel. And they have lifted up the head against you. <laughs> Hasharallah, your enemies are in uproar, but they're not just Israel enemies. Oh, Hawa, keep not your silence, hold not your peace. Your enemies are in the uproar. These are Hawa's enemies. They don't like your creator. <laughs> don't you get it? They're not down with your creator. They're not up with your creator. They're up with their false idols and gods of nothingness. 
They're enemies of your power, Israel, which is why they want to cut you off from being a nation so that you're no longer in remembrance. And when they do that, that's it. That's why they migrate. And this biblical war is happening way more recent than we thought it was because they shifted time back 333 years, 1,053 years, and 1,778 years to be exact. That's 1,800-year time shift. So they took stuff happening in the 1,200s that we're getting with Genghis Khan for us to John and pushed it back at least 1,800 years to the B.C.s. Now you're talking about King David in the biblical term, in the biblical uh, timeline, in the 600 B.C.s and all this Daniel stuff and all this B.C.s because they shifted time back 1,800 years. But this is more recent than you're thinking, man. Objects in mirror might be closer than what they appear. <laughs> There's still glaciation lines in America, man. I think this is play, play. That's how you make sense of India and China. <laughs> That's how you make sense of it, man. When you see clearly that China is India, is Japan, is Cathay, is America. Which is why they're confused, not us. You know. Where's Asia? Where's Asia? And even this map, Orientis finds map 1531. <laughs> Still has Asia where Cathay is. And Florida is. Cathay is Qatar, right? Cathay is Qatar. Cathay is Qatar. Hmm. The letter is generally considered to have been a European forgery. Uh, stop it. You just don't want to <laughs> give us no... Uh, absolutes right no validation but we see clearly during the crusades the press of john story seems to have been a sort of propaganda encouraging continued participation with the promise of a hither and to unseen ally the fact that they already claimed god was on their side was apparently insufficient in 1221 jockeys the vitri bishop of agri reported that the son that a son or grandson of president john now again we've been playing with is Nebuchadnezzar Genghis Khan. And since we got the previous drops discussing, especially the uh, Legend of the Jews, we're about to get back into Love to Yosef to Real for the amazing recon and the copper thread. <laughs> so Nebuchadnezzar is Solomon's son who had a baby with Queen Sheba, man, which would make him the grandson. Huh? of press John <laughs> which is why he feels he has a claim to this throne right he's a noble he is a noble now surfing that way now why is he named David if King David don't exist if it's just a Bible thing right if it's just a Bible thing you think this David's a Bible thing you think this David is a Bible thing you think Raja Haraja Chola II, Jadaran, Emperor of Soli, Preston John, the Pantheon, named his bond David because it's a Bible thing, because they're just enjoying the Bible? <laughs> or are we talking about the real Hebrews, man, that are connecting to their real Hebrew ancestry, man? Right. A non Jewish king of Tahama. What is this? Jewish, or are we talking Hebrew Khan? What does the Hebrew have to do with Raja Hiraja and the Cholas? Right, the Chola, which we got before, is the Soli. <laughs> the Chola is also the Soli, same thing. 
and his soulie is the Solomon. And these are the Solomons before, because he's the father of Solomon the first. So this Solomon title goes back before this Solomon here. And this David title goes before, the title David goes be, goes back before this David here. This David title goes back way before the David that we know, you know, in terms of the name and title David. And David's father, Jesse, you know, he would also be a titled David, Dawi, you know, Dawu. So we see it clearly, man. David is connected with Prester John. And then once this 1221 thing happened, this is after the war with Genghis Khan and Prester John, where Genghis Khan now steals the title David. So he's, they're saying, Bishop of Acre is saying, Yo, the son or grandson of President John is calling himself David and he's conquering Persia. The one or the person who had actually done this was none other than Genghis Khan. So, again, if you're researching President John after 1202, 1203, especially 1221, that's not the same Prester as King David, King David. It's probably Genghis Khan who stole the Khan. So you can't just take any Presser John info. You gotta look at the dates. I don't I don't rock with it being the real Preston flow if it's after 1203 person. <laughs> I know Genghis Khan took the Khan after that, called himself the Preston, called himself David, and stole the Khan. Stole the priesthood. Who didn't who did allow Increased travel between Europe and the territories he ruled. Searches for the legendary press to continue for some time into China. Look at all this, man. They're looking for press to John. They're searching for the legendary press to John in China, Ethiopia, Abyssinia. Remember the title Abyssinia predates Ethiopia. <laughs> but again, we're just talking press to John. Yeah. <laughs> Emperor de los Abyssinios. You know, which connects to the Habasa in Arabic. Which all connects to this mixed multitude. So, we have an idea. <laughs> That we know we're talking about a melanated priest king, which is why Morocco's against him. Not just for his melanin, but because they're melanated, he's melanated. All these tribes are melanated, <laughs> but the jealousy is real. They want his things. They want that crown on his head. They want his land. He, they, they want the riches. They want the, the drip, the garments. They, they want the shoes. They want to walk in the shoes of the Preston. Abyssinios. The surgeon in China, Ethiopia, Abyssinios. All over there. But they're not in the real Abyssinia. They're not in the real Ethiopia. <laughs> These are vague terms, right? This means Ethiopia means burnt face. Just wherever the burnt face is a Greek word. You can't be attached to Greek words. <laughs> Ethiopian is not our word. The Greeks called us burnt face. Fiery looking or uh, the ones with the deadly glance, the evil eye, which is the fire, which is that ruach they they see it in your man. They're afraid of it as a weapon. China is Kana. We know where China is. All this is really in America. So when they finally figured that out, they started searching in America. And they called off their search over there in 1645, and they kept invading the Americas and kept invading the Americas. And it kept invading the Americas. <laughs> right? Kept taking millions and acres, millions of acres of land. We fought back. We fought back. And again, this Northwest stuff, all this Northwest stuff, the first to Northwest of Mexico, remember? Remember, boss. They call this a maxim, but specifically they call it North 
West Africa. <laughs> so this Northwest was all about taking America, the Moors taking America, <clears throat> which is why they set up in Morocco, which is why Israel's migrating. <laughs> yeah. Which is why Tacoma say was willing to die for this. Because they're fighting for the promised land. Oh, yeah, President John is a marvel. <laughs> Even though a guy they were talking about in 1145 presumably would have been dead by then. What? He would have been what by then? In 1145? That's crazy. That's crazy because last time that we checked, boss, you were searching from, from 1145. <laughs> Got him to 1645. What do you mean he would have been dead by 1145? You kept searching at 1645. You never heard about the fountain of youth, the living water, the healing, curing water? I guess not. Or I guess so. But we still talk at 1145. Maybe they were looking for descendants or a dynasty. Or assume someone who lives in a miraculous land could potentially live for centuries. Mm. Regardless, the myth eventually fell out of favor. And even well before that, the story largely changed from an immensely powerful ruler who was biding his time for some reason to a weakened one who might well have needed help from Europe. <laughs> from Europe. So instead of them making him immensely powerful priest king, just to mock them, they turned them into a weak one who needed their help. He did appear in Fantastic Four comments, though. Uh oh. So, what you saying, Preston? <laughs> you think this is a game, man? So, Preston John's in the Mongol history. Preston John is in, you know, all on these maps. <laughs> and this indigenous history flow, right? You can't get more indigenous, my nigga, than. Northwest, a maxim <laughs> for hand, nah, boss. You can't get more indigenous than being literally on the map of America, right? <laughs> In 1530, boss. You can't get more indigenous than India Superior, boss. All right. And he's in the damn Marvel comics. And why won't they make a Marvel press the job? Because Presser John ain't messing with no Avengers. Presser John's against the Avengers. The Avengers is nothing but the Olympiads, man. You got nothing but Zeus in them, right? Zeus in them, Ham in them, right? The press is fighting against the Avengers. <laughs> now, he teams up with, I think they say, Deadpool and Cable or, you know, all these other guys. You know what I mean? But he don't team up with no Avengers. So they have to make the Avengers the good guys. And you can't make Presser John a bad guy. They can do that with Kang. You can make Genghis Khan or Kang a bad guy, time traveling and you know, doing all his stuff. You can make Kang a bad guy. You can make Genghis a bad guy. But you can't make Presser a bad guy. That's against the rules of, of all spirituality, man, because this is the Khan of Khan. So they rather not even make the Marvel thing because they can't do it without trying to make Presser John some bad, evil character. And they got to make the Avengers the good guys, which they really are the bad guys. They're just Zeus in them. They're, they're the invading Morocco, right? So <laughs> they just leave him out of the whole thing. But he's still here in the OG original Marvel comics, man. <laughs> Letting you know that this is true. And, you know, all these energy weapons and all these, all this stuff got some connection with reality. So. Let's see what we can get out of this drop. <laughs> Since tis I who hold the supreme weapon, tis I who shall ask the questions. Talk on it, Preston. He's holding the supreme weapon. So Preston got the supreme weapon. Now, I wonder if this is what they call the evil eye, which is supposed to be a weapon, connected to some time travel flow. But remember... 
you see clearly in the year of the dragon and the etymology of dragon is to see clearly is also the one with the deadly glance or evil eye. So all this connects with the dragon technology. So Preston said, man, I'm asking the questions. What manner of creatures, creatures be you who do possess the power to turn your bodies to flame? He's talking about the Fantastic Four now. And they said, we're not creatures, mister. We, we're humans, just like we hope you are. And I'm the one who can flame on and off. That's why I'm called the Human Torch. Presta says, truly astounding. Now be good enough to tell me what century this be. Because I be time traveling, boss. <laughs> they said, why, it is the 20th century, of course, 1966. So you're telling me. Presta just pops up in 1966. They stopped searching for him in 1645. <laughs> that means he's still popping off recently, right? <laughs> then 700 years have passed since the men of Avalon placed me in the chair of survival. Huh. Whoa. Whoa. Now let's do the math, man. Because remember... Remember, boss, this is too much fun. This is Preston Watt, 45, boss. We on the war, man. <laughs> we investigating. We're doing the work. Sikawa and Kandawi. In the end of days, we were humbly coming back to Hawaii. Humbly getting back in go. And when you are a righteous flock, you deserve a righteous shepherd. And there's only one shepherd, Ezekiel 37. There's only one shepherd, Ezekiel 34. <laughs> We're talking about the firstborn, Psalms 89. They've been searching for a mighty long time. Now, he's going to take it right back to here. He's going to say, I was in the seat of survival for 700 years. Let's do the math. All right. 1966, subtract the 700, you're in 1266. 1266 is right after the Genghis Khan invasion, 1202. Right? That's about... 60 years after, 50 years after. So something happened to where the men of Avalon or Atlantis <laughs> placed the Prester in the chair of survival. So where has the Prester been, right? In some type of suspended animation, they say. Where did Moses go where his body is, his eyes were never dim, right? We got that in Deuteronomy 34. Even though he died in that, you know, uh, Mount Nebo flow, you know, his eyes were never dim. You know, he was never, he, he, his, his, his energy was unabated. His spirit was unabated. His eyes was never dim. Hey, my dragons are waking up, man. <laughs> Woo, we popping off. I just felt a little mini tremor earthquake. I say, oh, man, the dragon. The, woo, the more we wake up, the more they wake up, man. That's just the truth. Yeah, they searching for Prester here. They're searching for Prester there. Abyssinio. <laughs> God. So who put him in the seat of survival, right? Because this ain't no play play. It says, you mean you've been sleeping in that chair for seven centuries? Avalon, the mythical land mentioned, the mythical land, right? So, of course, we're talking Atlantis, man. In the legends of King Richard, mythical, you say, not so. There was a land of Avalon, for my eyes have seen it. It was truly a land of wizards, a kindly and wondrous of kindly and wondrous man. 
men who placed me in the chair of survival so that I would live to tell of their story after the final day of doom have had slain them all. Whoa. So whoever put him in a chair is the one who did the slaying. And he said there was a land of wizards, kindly and wondrous men, and they were slain by the men who placed me in the chair of survival. Slain them all. Then it must have been they who gave you that weapon you used against us. Ah, so it was. My name is Prester John. And long have I traveled the world seeking to unravel the mysteries of mankind. That is why men have ever called me the Wanderer. My service with good Richard, good King Richard, has finally come to an end. Now, this King Richard flow connects to this uh, Braveheart flow, right? So all this is about Hebrews, the Braveheart, gladiators, <laughs> all this stuff, man. And King Richard, you know, is part of this. Scotland, um, you know, families that, you know, were fighting against uh, which king was they fighting against? You know, whoever, King James, King whatever. You know what I'm saying? So they were all allied, man, with the and Roos, the Roos, the, the uh, oh, man, uh, what else they call them? Um, let me see. King Richard and them were allied. Yeah, yeah, all the Scottish flow, and that's the Andrews families, you know what I'm saying? That's Israel, you know, Jerusalem. All these were allied, you know what I'm saying? So it, it this allows us to look back in that Braveheart story and to really dig on and pinpoint King, King Richard, you know what I'm saying? Because King Richard was tribed up with the Prester. And there's also somebody called the Black Knight, who they say was tribed up with them too, and now. I am free to probe the countless wonders of far off lands. So, man. All right, all right, all right, man. We're just talking Preston John. Like I said, Preston John is a marvel. Now they got him with red head, red hair, and he's a Caucasian. Of course, of course. He's a Caucasian, but. He's known as the High Pope and Emperor of India and Ethiopia. But he's a Caucasian. <laughs> Stop it. He ain't no High Pope of Africa or India superior. <laughs> and you a Caucasian. I didn't think you need to stop it, man. Um, so, also known as John the Presbyter, John the Priest, Keeper of Memories, that mem sauce. Yosef, take the wheel. Patriarch John, Presbyter Johannes, Presbyter John, all this, right? So, Sinopa, Sultan John of Babylon and the Wonder. So, okay. And that King Richard's right here, Richard the Lionheart. Dane Whitman in the body of Abor Garrington encountered a crusader named Presbyter John battling the Muslims, battling the Moor. This is why they mad, son. <laughs> So he's against these Avengers. He's against these Moroccans and their treaties. The Black Knight, uh, just like I just said, <laughs> the Black Knight helped over, helped John overcome his attackers and brought him to the Crusaders camp. They then prevented an assassination attempt on Richard the Lionheart. So they helped King Richard against some assassination attempt. Now, after the Crusaders, John traveled the world until he found the Isle of Avalon. There he gained the evil eye. <laughs> As a plague seemed to wipe out the citizens of Avalon, John prepared to sit upon the seat of survival. Well, what does it mean, man? Which would place him in suspended animation. What does it mean? But then you got Genghis Khan coming out of nowhere, right? However, Kang appeared, trying to get John to join him because Genghis Khan wanted President John to join him in some of these wars because they used to be allied, right? They used to fight side by side because that's his grandson or foster son, whatever you want to call it, All right? As a result of their battle, John was sent into the past. 
Where has Prester been all this time, right? He attempted to manipulate events in the past, advising a Frankish king to battle Vikings. Remember, the Franks and the Andrews were tribed up in that link that we got lost tribe with the Andrews. They said that the Franks and these Rus, the Andrews, were part and parcel in the creation of these Templar, these knights. Now we're talking swan knights, the Babars, the Barbary. He was stopped by Thunderstrike acting as Thor, man. Like I said, the Avengers are no bueno. Who was investigating a town, Cain had reverted to medieval times. A bolt from Mjernors somehow triggered the eye to teleport John back to Avalon. So this eye has to do with teleportation. Why do they call it evil? Because maybe they don't like it. Maybe the hijack calls everything evil that they don't like. Maybe. But the eye was placed in the care of Prester John, which is why he's holding it on that other comment. The device actually split into six pieces and spread throughout the globe, becoming the focal point of Avengers <laughs> and Defenders War. Which is also the focal point of what? Thanos and the, these uh, rings and the stones and Back to the Lord of the Rings flow, right? Prester John carried a new version of the evil eye called his Stellar Rod. So he basically attached it to like his staff. And the staff he carried was now the Stellar Rod or the evil eye. The evil eye is made of an unknown metal, which we got before. It's like the alchemy. The alchemical dragon is of unknown substance. Everything's unknown with the dragon, just like this evil eye. So something about this evil eye has to do with the alchemical dragon, man. And they're calling it evil because they're fighting against it. The hijack is fighting against it, just like they call us savages and, you know, uh, demon savages or something. You know what I mean? Uh, because they're fighting against us, man. We are unknown just like this eye is unknown. Remember, the etymology of Dracon is to what? See? Clearly, dragon means what to see clearly. Perhaps the one with the deadly glance, the one with paralyzing sight, or the one with the evil eye. Ah. <laughs> God, oh, we're just talking the evil eye. Ah. Uh, no. but is capable of manipulating matter at the molecular level, firing concussive force blasts, disintegrating matter, nullifying other energy sources, and creating and destroying force fields. So this is why they call it evil eye, because they're getting blasted by the force blast. The hijack's getting blasted by this thing. It's manipulating matter at the molecular level against the hijack. It's disintegrating matter against the hijack. It's nullifying all other energy sources the hijack's trying to use against us and creating or destroying any force fields the hijack's trying to set up against us. You know what I'm saying? So the evil eye possesses dimensional time travel abilities as well. That's why Kang wants it, right? <laughs> Empty button that charged it, but if the button was left on, the power would rapidly rise to dangerous levels, causing it to explode. The eye would be broken into six similar bits when it exploded, and they would it would be pushed through the earth until they and met sunlight again. So it sounded like Lord of the Rings when it you know was pushed through the earth, and you know they had to go get it and all this stuff. So I'm just saying they're getting all this mythology mythos all these movies all this stuff is happening based on real shit real people real life your real life story right they gave you his story your story has to do with technology of unknown substances <laughs> capable of manipulating matter at molecular levels man so when they say evil eye no, we're talking technology, also time travel abilities. 
below who <laughs> is Preston Child. And who's the Kakora? Who are the Kakora? Yeah, you like that transition? I'm just talking car. I'm still just talking car guitar and Chicago. <laughs> I'm talking the she. I'm talking the Almec she. I'm talking the Western she and Mongol she. I'm talking the she like the key, like the inner G, inner she. I'm talking Cora. And if I'm talking Cora, I'm talking Carolina. Kokora was a legendary Native American kingdom, boss. Don't trip. You're about to get mind blast. Y'all ready for some mind blasting, man? <laughs> I saved the very best, man, for 145. Let's get it, man. Kokora was a legendary Native American kingdom or tribe. Keep that in mind. Sought during the 16th century by various European explorers in present day South Carolina, folks. <laughs> The Kakor is the Kara. Lina is the Kara. Katai. Katai is Cathay. Is America. Is Promised Land. <laughs> is Carolina. Kara just means black or melanated. The legend originated after Spanish slave traders. Capture an Indian they call Francisco de Cacora in 1521. And afterwards, they came to treat Francisco's home country as a land of abundant wealth and natural resources. The Shakora legend influenced both the Spanish and the French in their attempts to colonize North America for the next 60 years. Now all our maps are from what, 1500s, 1530, even this India Superior map is from 1548. So this time period is we have the orientation, we have the maps from the 1500s to go along with it. This British Museum map that has Presser John in North America next to India Superior is 1530. Orientis finds 1531, Asia. No North America. Map of America with Cathay and China and India and Japan. 1500. God. So this is very relative, very relevant and relative. And we'll see how it connects to Esteban too, because this is really about to be mind blasting. Let's get it. Afterwards, they came to treat Francisco's home country as a legend. Oh, I'm sorry, as a land of abundant wealth and natural resource. So you're telling me, let's back it up. An Indian was captured, called Francisco de Cacora or of Cacora. Francisco, they said, is his baptismal name. Cacora itself refers to See, Francisco is his baptism name, given to a Native American kidnapped 1521, along with 70 others. That 70 is interesting, man. The core itself is a kingdom or a tribe. So this this con they found <laughs> connected with the kingdom, why not? 
this Carolina Naga connected with the kingdom. We've been digging on the car of Katai, right? And when we talk about the Cherokee, C-H-E-R-O, it's also the Kara. Kara, Kara, Kara. <clears throat> right in our face bones. So don't get no more indigenous than that. And this legend of this land of abundant wealth, cities of go, go, <laughs> natural resources, influenced the French and Spanish for the next 60 years of colonization. So they knew about this in 1521. What does this have to do with their search for Prester John? Good question, right? I mean, what does it have to do with their search for the Prester? Make sure we're good. Okay. What's it got to do with search for Prester John? 1521 is right in the right in the nick of things right in the thick of things they knew when they found this indian <laughs> in the carolinas and brought this indian to spain it influenced their search for Preston john <laughs> it influenced their search for the promised land it influenced their search my life, for the cities of gold Portuguese, Spaniard, or the French. Because if it influenced Spain, it influenced Portugal. You did. So this, this Kokora legend <laughs> is also the influencing thing for Esteban, the whole Esteban flow. All this connected with the Esteban flow. Esteban the more Mustafa Zimore, 1501, Berber, hmm. he was a nigga, he was a nigga, not just any nigga, oh. he's the first nigga to make contact with the inhabitants of New Mexico, a more slave or a Moorish conquistador. How do you want to tell your story, not his story? Now, when they say he was a so-called, you know, apparently he was supposed to be. They say as the bomb was kidnapped when, oh, the Portuguese military conquered the city. 1522 they captured Esteban so you say Esteban was captured in 1522 <laughs> come on he was captured in 1522 Kokora was captured in 1521 and you don't think this is you think there's look, man, ain't no such thing as coincidence boy Okay, Kokora was captured. That influenced what? Spain, right? Portugal, right? France. For the next 60 years, they're looking for the land of gold, right? Cities of gold. They're looking for the wealth. Looking for the land of Preston. This influenced all the maps. Now they knew since they found this Naga that's connected to the cities of gold, wealth, then they knew that has to be the land of Kapongu, Prester John Cathay. This is why King Henry VII has shown this map in 1500. This is why they put Prester on the map in 1530. Because this is after 1521. This influenced everything. Yeah. 1521 is very close. To 
this Esteban the Moor kidnapping in 1522, which I think is a joke. I think he he was sent by Black King Charles. Because you can't tell us. You can't tell us. At the same damn time, there's a Holy Roman Emperor on the throne. I don't, I ain't buying it, boss. Y'all surfing the wave on our IG, man. We are popping off over here, man. <laughs> we are popping off. You can't tell us. Hey, caught up, man. That's what I like to see. You can't tell us that during this time, Charles Kento, Black King Charles is still on the throne. And he actually look a lot like Esteban, don't he? So he's calling the shots during the Esteban invasion. He's the one that saw Francisco Cocor being, you know, dropped off from America in the original slave trade, just like they're proving started in America with them taking these so-called Indians, which are these Nagas in Nagaville, <laughs> and showing them off like, look, man, we found these other uh, dark skin, copper colored Hebrews right here in America. He wasn't, it wasn't a white man finding us. It was a black man finding us, man. And this black man sent black ass Esteban. Because they want to find the land of the Khan, Prester John. They want to find the Khan. So this is the war that's happening. It's Prester and these copper-colored tribes here against these newcomers that's setting up Moroccan, you know, treaties and, you know what I'm saying, all this. By the time they set it up in the 1600s, 1700s, this was the result. Esteban and them coming over here, pillaging the native villages. You think it's a coincidence? <laughs> they flipped your map, man. You think it's a coincidence, boss? Yeah, Esteban came right up through that same little area. You know, Columbus came up, man. Haiti, Trinidad, and all that, right? Hit Florida. Cruise along the coast. Pop through Texas. Told Texas not as cool. Dipped into Mexico. Had his old situation here. Crossed all that back up through Arizona to Cibola, which is Shimbala which is Kalelus. And Esteban was killed in Hawiku for bringing the tribe decorations of death, they called it. Brought them idols and idolatry and tried to steal our sisters, tried to steal our women, tried to steal our daughters, so they put them to death. And he tried to steal the turquoises. <laughs> so they, yeah, they said, nah, enough is enough with this Esteban guy. He was put to death in Hawaku in the Cibola Zuni complex New Mexico and I've been to Cibola <laughs> and they don't they don't like talking cities of gold because they know it's it's a lot to it over there you know what I'm saying they're very hush hush about this Esteban Eco situation man but they know it they won't deny it yeah Esteban we see you man and while we're talking Kokora Again, again, I'm just talking about the Americas, man. <laughs> and look how, look, this is two sentences. You would have missed this if you didn't know what you were looking for. We missed it because we didn't know all this time. I said, let's go back to Wiki because we, we always do these deep dives into these hard to find, uh, you know, documents on Press the Job. Let's just go to Wiki, man. <laughs> Let's just see if they've done some of the work for us. And yeah, boy, look, you go to Wiki on President John, it's going to take you through the whole historian flow, boom, 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 
three magi. It's going to talk Asia. Again, we know we're in Asia. It's going to take you to where? Oh. More Nestorianism. All right. Now you're in Syria. <laughs> this, is the, this is the greatest investigation of all. It's connecting the whole earth when you talk Prester John. Because Priest King, King David, is the king of the entire world. The whole earth, man. I'm talking priest and king. Yeah, and now you're talking to Otto of Friesland. So it's going to take you to all the continent of Opal, all the Rome flow, right? So then you keep going. It's going to take you into this Kara Katai flow. And you can spell the Kara with a Q, a K, or a C. Katai again. It's Cathay. And so the Kara Katai at the time were Buddhists, not Christians. Well, uh, these are Hebrews, but we know that they're not Christians. <laughs> Because they're telling us these car Katai are not Christian. So any of this stuff is hijacked city talking about some Christian king, Prester John, when they're clearly not Christians. So they call them Nestori, which again relates to an old king renowned for wise counsel. <laughs> Who's the old king of the Katai? But yeah, then they're going to take it to the letter of Prester John, which we've read and got some pieces of that. But we're talking Hebrew translations. It's going to take you to the Byzantine. And again, the Byzantine Empire fell one year after the 1452 Doom Diverses Papal Bull, signed by Nicholas, Pope Nicholas. It's going to take you through the Alexander flow. It's going to take you to the Mongol, which means the Great One Empire. Now they're going to pick up a 1221, and you know we're talking Genghis Khan. But look, King David of India, they're calling the son or grandson of Prester John. So this King David title has nothing to do with just no Bible flow. It's the earth flow. The whole earth, you know, has to ab abhere and honor this David flow. And if you don't, then you're telling us, what side of the war you on? You on Hawaii's side, the House of David's side, or you on the hijack side? You choose, man, but it's all happening. And, you know, he's conquering Persia, you know, all this, but this by this time, we're talking Genghis Khan. They just didn't know which one was which because President John was already whooping up on these Persians and Celtics and, you know, Seljuk Turks and all this. You know, he was already whooping up on Moab and then Genghis Khan continued to whoop up on Moab and then, but he also kind of had his Moabite flow too, you know, where it seems like he was a part of the treaty as well to some degree. But it says, as it turns out, King David was Genghis Khan, but again, he took the title David, which was the original Preston, which is the original Preston. Yeah, and then it's going to take you to some of this William of Rubruk. Get, get that drop. You know what I'm saying? Digging on the Mongol flow. The link between Prester John and Genghis Khan. All this is in the wiki, man. We don't have to go far for this. If Genghis Khan exists, Prester John exists. Simple and plain because there's a link between Prester John and Genghis Khan. <laughs> and now we see a link in with that in King David, too. As Prester John became identified with Genghis Khan's foster father. So whether he's the grandson or the foster son, there's a link between Prester John and Genghis Khan. Tagru, king of the Kari. It's again the Kara, Karlana, or the Shikara. Same Kara. Same Kara. <laughs> We're talking the same Kara. Given the Jin title, Ong Kong, or Wong Kong, which means priest king. So... This is just research and press of John. Now you're, you know, with the Marco Polo flow, man. <laughs> Get all this drop. The Cathay flow. The war between Prester and Genghis Khan started when Genghis Khan 
Shalak, new ruler of the rebellious Tartars. So the rebellious Tartars are led by Genghis Khan, the real grand Tartars of Tartaria, which is the whole earth. But greater Tartaria is the Americas, man. And these aren't the rebellious Tartars. They're rebelling mainly against King David, which we got in that Press the John Legend and his sources book. Original sources, original writers of that time writing literally about, you know, this Tartar flow and how Genghis Khan was rebelling against his foster father or uncle or whatever you want to call it, Prester John King David. Because he asked for the head of Prester John's daughter in marriage. And Prester said, man, you ain't no real Khan. I can't give you my daughter like that. I'll take care of you. But in this case, if he's the foster son, <laughs> he's not a real David. So that anger by his lowly vassal would make such a request. <laughs> you think Preston John is his lowly vassal? Would you please stop it, man? <laughs> but Preston John denied him. And the war followed because he wanted the daughter. He wanted to be married into the family. He wanted to be an Arab proper, not a pretender. But yeah, you know, Wiki's going to take it to all that. Uh, Travels of Sir John Manifold. It's going to connect it with Wolfram van Eschenbach, which is one of the writers of, you know, these romances. Shout out to the Templar, man. And one of these romances connects to the Holy Grail. And we know that the Holy Grail legend connects to the function. And the function is Presser John. The function is King David. The function is you. Now you're going to dig on Parsifal and the romances. <laughs> All because you're looking for Presser John, right? Yeah. I hope you're searching. Hosea 3. Search for Owa and Kandawi. But even Wiki's going to take you to that. Then Wiki's going to take it from the Mongolian Empire to Ethiopia. Now you're searching for Preston John <laughs> in Africa or Northwest Africa, a Maxim, right? Because, you know, of course, you already in Africa, boss. I said you already in Africa, boss, right? Yeah. So all this Ethiopia, Mac, you know, this is original Ethiopia. This is original Africa, <laughs> if you want to look at it like that. Afra in etymology means dust, earth. So this is the original earth, dust. You know, this land, according to some of these mason flows, um, you know, this land is at a higher elevation than other lands of the earth plane. This land was first to prop out, pop out the primordial waters after the flood. All these lands didn't pop out the flood at the same time. So civilization didn't start, you know, where they're saying it did because this land popped out first, according to their secret knowledge. So we have old Ethiopia here, not there. But Wiki's going to take you to Ethiopia. Wiki's going to take you to the three Indias. <laughs> yeah. You know, you guess what they are, whether you say in the Americas and the Africas and the Europe and Asia there. But Presta the King David was the Khan of all three Indias. Yeah, I mean, that's what Wiki going to take you. My point is, you keep going, man. You over there talking kings of Aragon. You, you talking all these things. You talking Lebna Dango Dawi. Another way to follow the Dawi line in the Ethiopian, um, you know, histories, man. You know, you got to recon all this. King of Ethiopia, Presser John. But we just got that out the marvel that they also called him the King of Ethiopia, right? High priest, high pope, high prester. Because the pope is the prester. The prester is the original pope, emperor of India and Ethiopia. God, this is what Wiki, what, this is what Wiki talking about. King of Ethiopia, yeah, okay. Then you get to the Americas and they give you two doggone sentences. And you might not even see that. You go right past it. You go right past it. <laughs> and now you got the Shakespearean drive talking about Preston John, man. Now, now you got the Marvel flow. 
talking about President John. Everybody looking for President John. Treasure hunters. Everybody want the treasure. Now it's connected to uh, Son of Thunder, right? Who's that? Who's that? Yeah, Zeus in them, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Pastor John is the most fascinating investigation because it's going to connect Atlantis. It's going to connect the cities of gold. It's going to connect all these wonderful investigations all into one through one dragon fly perspective. But if you don't see the Americas, which they don't really want you to see, they gave you two sentences. And let's read it. The Italian historian Peter Martyr de Anguera identified the land of Preston John with Kokora in his decades of the New World. Francisco de Kokora, a native of what is now South Carolina, who was captured by the Spaniards, taken to Spain by Lucas Vasquez de Allian, had told Anguera that his land was ruled by priests. That's why they put Prester on the map, man. Yeah. That's why we see Prester on the map. Because his land, his Kara, is ruled by priests. It's ruled by the Prester. It's ruled by the priest king. And then we, you know, started digging on it. Okay, so... Francisco was a name given to him after his so-called baptism, where he was kidnapped along with 70 others. And we said, damn, how did they get him, right? How did they kidnap Shakur? And what is this 70 about? And I've been reconning this 70, and you could recon it. 70 is an interesting correlation when it comes to the Hebrews, man. Right, you got these 70 elders connected with this Moses flow, man. You got this 70 Sanhedrin flow. Did they just get any Nagas or did they get 70 elders? Did they get 70 priests, right? Because I don't think this Francisco was just some random person. And I don't think the 70 that went with him in this kidnapping was some random Nagas either. I don't think so. It's just, you know, I don't think so, man. So, like, who's this 70 for real, for real? Now, some believe this Kokora was from the Kataban group. Kataban group is interested, man. We got to really dig on this. Because you're connecting the Isis, the Isis, the East Wise. You know what I'm saying? Got a lot happening right there. Damn, so it says Gordillo had been ordered by De Alion to cultivate friendly relationships with the people to prepare for later colonization. De K. De Kikos, eager for slaves, persuaded him, persuaded him to trick the natives. This is their story. This is their story. The Spaniards suddenly raised anchor and set sail for Santa Domingo with 70 of the natives still aboard. Damn, boss. Damn, boss. So these hijacks had their boat, had some trinkets, according to their story. Trick the natives to get on board. Hey, look at my boat, man. Look at my things. Had them go maybe into one of these little compartments underground. And took their ass <laughs> all the way to Spain. Seventy natives still on board. Still on board including the man who will be called or named Francisco. When they arrived, Elion condemned the leaders for their treachery. He condemned them not because they took regular niggas. Man, they took priests. You know you condemn. He took the matter before the commission headed by Diego Columbus, 
the commission declared the captive natives to be free and ordered them return to their mainland, but such a trip never took place as it was considered too costly. So they knew they did the wrong thing. They knew they had to free the Nagas. They were ordered to be free, but never got to be free because it cost too much. Hijack City. Hijack 101. <laughs> man. Man, man, man. You're just looking at this Kator name. You also got it as Shakur. Shakira. Shakira is just Shakur. Oh, man. What about Tupac Shakur? Ah. Uh, what does the Shakur family have to do with Shakur? Hmm, you know, we always heard it tied to South America, but does it also tie right here to the Carolinas? You know what I'm saying? Let's go back. So they sailed off without warning, intending to sell the slaves into slavery. So again, they didn't start by selling your ass out of Africa into slave trade. They started the slave trade with these 70 Nagas. Here it says around 60, but it just said 70. It started with the sale of the captives of America, man. <laughs> they were selling your ass from America, man, which makes way more sense. And in America, they were selling you ass. So among the captives was an Indian who the Spanish eventually named Francisco Cacoro. Okay. Upon their return, Gordillo's backers, Luis Vasquez de Alion, petitioned the Spanish Real Audiencia for the right to conquer and settle the land. The next year, he took his case to the crown in Spain. And who's the crown in Spain? Who's a holy Roman emperor at this time? Charles Canto. This is off a panel from in Lima, Peru, by the way. This is a painting in Lima, Peru. So this ain't nobody's play play. A nigga. They took it up with nigga Charles. <laughs> nigga Charles. Black ass King Charles. Oh, uh, man, so. So they took it to the crowd, promoting his claim with evidently exaggerated tales about the bounty that awaited in Chacor. By this time, Francisco de Cacor or Cacorano had been baptized, learned Spanish, started working as Alion's personal servant, joined Alion in Spain, contributed to his master's account of wealth. So now he's helping them find more Nagas. Or, I'm just going to throw a little long shot. <laughs> Since we know Esteban is supposed to be captured a year later. Is this Esteban? <laughs> Did they get Esteban, you know, and then send him back, right? Did they send Esteban back for a stack <laughs> to help them conquer more Nagas because he already knew the terrain? <sighs> Things that make you go, hmm. The alien moved the coordinates of the land from 33.5 degrees north recorded by Cordillo to 35 to 37 degrees. Evidently, this was an effort to sell Kokor as a new Andalusia by giving it parallel coordinates to the famously fertile area of Spain. The crown granted Elian's request. Peter Marto de Anguier also met with Elian and Francisco recorded notes about Kokor 
which spread awareness of the territory, particularly after they were published in Martyr's Chronicle, Decade 1530. Monogamy? <laughs> 1530 is the same time that the Brits are making this map. 1530, labeling this the land of Prester John in India Superior, in Cathay. I can't make this up, man. What else? So now that we, you know, understand a little that this Shakur connects with Carolina, let's read the fine print, man. I like the fine print, don't you? Used to be Kokora, a fact in that portion of American history relating to the voyages of Spanish discovery and exploration in the 16th century, not generally known or remembered, and one that will be of local interest here, is that South Carolina was originally named Kokora. Body bag, body bag for the illusion. So Kokor is a kingdom, remember? And this Carolina is not just a state. It's relating to a kingdom and a tribe. And who's the tribe of the core? The car. <laughs> the Kara Katai of Cathay. The promised land. And they say the Shakur is related to this land of abundant wealth. Promised land. Cities of go oh, 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 oh. This is recorded in David B. Scott's School History of the United States in the following paragraph for which we are indebted to Master Claire Hutchinson. Quote, The expedition of Vasquez de Elian in 12, excuse me, 1520 shows the dreadful cruelty of the Spaniards to the Indians. He went to the Bahamas to seize the natives and bring them to the island of Hispaniola to work there in the mines as slaves. A storm drove him on the coast of what is now South Carolina, where he was treated with great kindness by these Nagas, by the Indians. We greeted Nagas with kindness. We greeted these hijacks with kindness. While many of these were visiting on board his ships, they were suddenly fastened down under the hatches and the vessel set sail. So they did put these Nagas in some corridor under the ship, fasten them under the hatches, and they bailed out of there, set sail. Disaster followed the ships, of course. <laughs> and one of them was wrecked and all on board perished. Damn. Not just the hijacks, but also some of the Nagas they took. So these Indians got tricked to be on a ship that ends up perishing. That's horrible, man. That's a horrific death. The Indians, on the other, preferred death to slavery. So they preferred that than to slavery and almost to a man starved themselves. The Allian paid the penalty of this atrocious cruelty in 1535 when he went to settle his now province of Kokora, now South Carolina, the natives imitating his former treachery enticed many of his men from the ships and massacred them. Woo! Sound like eye for an eye, two for two. <laughs> that don't sound like no JC turn the other cheek. Sound like some Hebrew law. The Aliyad himself escaped with difficulty only to return in disgrace to Hispaniola. So they uh, tricked these Nagas, put them under a hatch, and left. And now we understand that Kokora <laughs> is the car, is the Carolinas. Con. And I'll leave you with some of these links here. Before we make our dismount to the legend of the Jews. Let's go. Oh, man. <laughs> I, for I forgot I had this up. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, yeah, when you look up this Kokora now, man, Medford Library, University of South 
Carolina Lancaster. You know, they're going to give you some things, some videos and stuff, man. They'll tell you a little bit of history, okay? And then they're going to give you a... And then they're going <laughs> to... Then they're going to show you the powwow. And then they're going <laughs> to take you to the damn powwow, man. Y'all want to go to the powwow? See what they talk about? <laughs> Y'all want to see the power or what, man? Y'all coming? <laughs> Damn, this is their power, y'all. This is what's happening. Procession of dancers at the Shakura power. Late 20th century, I guess so. It's, this don't seem too <sighs> historic. You know, this seems very recent. <laughs> Kakora, Kakora. Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> Damn, damn, damn. Why? Yeah. This is what they did to the Cherokee. This is what they do to the Choctaw. This is what they do to the Chickasaw. This is what they do to Hebrew. Now they put all these garbs and act like they you. Like they're the originals of the like they're the original people of South Carolina. Damn. Damn, damn. What happened to the Shakur? I gotta take a I gotta I gotta get a little picture of this. Just a little picture. Damn. <laughs> what happened to the Shakur, Jack? Damn. All right, let's go, man. I can't look at this too long. Let's go. How y'all really? <laughs> y'all still with me, man? We still building? We good? Okay, okay. So, let's go to Duke, man. Uh, Shakora, the original name of the Carolina. Shakora, the Indian name of Carolina. So, now we see it clearly. Everybody knew it but us, right? Everybody knew it. I mean, oh, this one has a little music to it. This one has a little song to it. Did y'all know that? There were some songs about this Kakora, Kakora, before it was Shakira, Shakira. Y'all know there was some music to it? All right. Uh, shall I I'll get it from here? <clears throat> Let me take a sip before I start singing on y'all. High quality H two O. All right. So what's this? What's the music? Vainly the wizards of darkness would veil thee. High in the azure thou shinest afar. Sages unnumbered hereafter shall hail thee. As they of the Orient did Bethlehem Star. So they brought this right into the Hebrew flow. Lone Star of Nations. Kokora, Kokora, Shakira, Shakira. I told you she stole this, man. I'm trying to tell you. Hell midst the darkness of tyranny's night. Sword of the Spirit and God of the Bible. They bring it right to the Bible flow with the Shakora. Thine is the might by which battle is done on in that name, then which heathens would label ye sons of Shakur for liberty on lone star of nations. Shakur, Shakur, <laughs> hell midst the darkness of tyranny. Nay. So we're talking about the struggle, the trite. We're talking about the strife of, of Jacob, man. Jacob's trouble. Strike, oh, strike home for your heart stone and altar. Mothers and daughters shall nerve thee to war. And where is the craven whose spirit would falter while waves over southern Shakora thy star? Lone star. Of nations, Shakur, Shakur, hell, midst the darkness of tyranny's night, 
Lone Star of Nations, Shakora, Shakora, hell midst the darkness of Terry's night, shine in thy heavens, alone in thy glory, justice our buckler, and freedom our might. Lone Star of Nations, Shakora, Shakora, hell midst the darkness of Terry's night. Man, they broke that down. I would like to, you know, hear somebody play this, man. I want to know how how we vibe into this, man. Man, you know, we in Duke University with this one, man. We getting the drop. We getting the drop. Oh, wow. wow. Damn, damn, damn. I'm out of here. I can't take this no more. So, we got a lot more to dig on on the Shakura flow. <laughs> a whole lot more. Because, you know, clearly it's connected with the South Carolina flow. We're just bringing it back home. Oh, uh, wow. Very simple. To get our food, we must get our breath, our revelation, and our secure foundation. Hook. The left strong power enters your house. What do you do? You walk. You gather. You tribe up through a door, a doll. You walk through the entrance like Proverbs chapter 8. Mama say, I'm over there at the entrance to the city. Screaming at you thoughtless, because <laughs> y'all forgot about mama. She going to give you that look. Mama going to give you the revelations. This is mama with her arms raised. No, man, this is your mama. <sighs> Sound. <sighs> Feminine. Wow. Masculine. Inhale feminine, exhale masculine. That's your framer. That's your shaper to get your design which is a mattock used for cutting, to cut off your day, to cut off your hijack, so that you can build a wall and put that hijack outside and divide who's who. Divide the frequency like the firmer man, so you know what's surrounded and what's contained within it. The entire Hebrew Aleph bed tells your story, your mem sauce, your water, your seed. Till you get to your towel. And there's this 23rd letter we got to recon, which is the God. Like a rope, like DNA. They say twisted, dark, wicked. Hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> What's this rope about? Con, con. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. We'll get back on this guy. Let's look at this James Adair right quick. Before we get the legend of the Jew for the dismount. Oh, yeah, this is a very interesting part in Legend of the Jews, man. Nice little belly flop here. Page 42. Okay. Get it from here because they're trying to connect. The creator's name, they keep putting the yo in front for some reason, right? I'm just going to get it from here, man. You got the drop. How far the Indian oath or manner of coveting agrees with that of the Hebrew. So James Adair is connecting the Indians with the Hebrews and James Adair was born in South Carolina, so he's really giving a South Carolina approach to this Indian talk, all right? connecting it with the Hebrews. On the like Solomon occasion, or Solomon occasion, I refer to the intelligent reader, okay, their method of embracing each other seems to resemble also that custom of the Hebrews, so these Indians in South Carolina 
are embracing each other with customs similar to the Hebrews. When a stranger became surety for another by giving him his wrist, to which Solomon alludes, if thou hast stricken the hand with the stranger, and you know, etc. I guess their common method of greeting each other is analogous with the above. The host only says "ish la chu," and the and the guest replies "ora ora oh, I am come in the name of O Air, which <laughs> James Adair would put the yo in front, right? Yo, ha, wa. So they already talking the Hawa. Are they talking the Ya Hawa or the Hawa? You know, this is just up clearly to interpretation as uh, they, you know, James Adair interprets it with the yo. But let's look into it with a dragonfly perspective, shall we? Because <laughs> I want to take it back to the O. Kanva, <laughs> rest in power, man. The power king, <laughs> he take, you don't gotta take it back to the old, you know, just just for this because they say, oh, you know, he said I came in the name of oh yeah, and in conjecture they put the yo, but what's the o, what's the o, you know what I mean? When o is joined to the other words, it always denotes a superlative, according to the universal figurative abbreviations of the great beloved name, thus with the Shikase Ise. Ah, then we just get the the Ise flow with the uh, Gokora flow. Where's right? Oh, man, I'm just putting it together. Kokor or Kokorano. One of these tabs I connected it with this. Uh, with the Ise, Iswa, one of them. It looked familiar. All right, all right. Let's just keep going. Let's keep going. Let's stay on point. <laughs> stay on point. Y'all know what I'm talking about, though. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's Ise, Iswa, Ise, all that stuff, right? Iseo, which they're interpreting as very great deer. Yanasa, a buffalo. Yanas, O, a very extraordinary. So they're saying the O is adding, like, a superlative or is adding extra to it. All right. But here it says signifying the house of omnipotent and the omnipotent is the creator which is why they have to put the god there right with the cherokee indians ah wata or wata keep the water flowing how way or how something signified and they're saying a great deer killer so i don't know where this trying you know I don't know what they are, but we are on the they're just putting deers all over the place. All right, so in it is compounded how a deer wa. <laughs> and it says the wa, the period of the divine day. So they know the wa has something to do with the divine day. And they know the O has something to do with the omnipotent. <laughs> so they're surfing away. They're playing around this thing. We got to bring it all in, right? We got to, ourselves, we got to see clearly. Ooh, Israelite Indians, what? Oh, this thing took me to the... Took me to the O, oh, man. <laughs> it's a lot of dropping this 
you know, James Adair with his Hebrew flow and his Yo Ha Wa flow. This is likewise the name for salt, Hawa. <laughs> May inform us that though at present time they use no salt in their religious offerings, they forbid it, forbid it, by reason of their distinct situation on the seashore, as well as the danger of blood attending the, the bringing it through an enemy's country. So look, change the dare all over the place. <laughs> but now Hawa has to do with just, just salt. And everything else had to do with this deer. But they know who was at play. You know, they, they know there's a connection. Let me go back right quick to where we're at. Why do they keep putting the yo on it? The y'all. You know what I mean? Of course, the hijacks bringing the Yahweh, right? Of course, they're bringing the exclamation of defiance and Yahweh backward is wow so you gotta reverse the curse to break the spell let's just get it right here we're gonna catch them right here we're gonna catch them slipping right here mysterious name Back to the O, right? So this O is very mysterious. The majestic A is very majestic. The Y, they already said, has something to do with the divine name. And they're talking Carolinas, right? Khan, <laughs> they're talking Shikara, Khan. Huh? Go back. It's a lot of drop in this drop, man. It's a lot of drop in this drop. Stay focused, drop. Come on. For the dismount. <laughs> here we go. We'll come back here and press that 146, my knock. It's all good. Okay, okay. I like the investigation and, you know, comparing the philology, right, the study of these languages, especially when we're talking about South, South Carolinas, right? They're bringing in Georgia, the Carolinas, a lot of what we're digging all, kind of centering it all in. We're talking Old Testament, right? So James Adair ain't playing with these people. He's connecting it. I just want to dig on this deity situation and this yo Hawa situation. So that we could see clearly. Let's see. Let's find where we at. Hmm. Oh yeah. Or Yahweh, Kaka, Kaka. Okay. Uh, y'all remember Hawaii? Let's see if they remember Hawaii. <laughs> Cause a lot of people forgot about Hawaii. A lot of people forgot about the ancient name. Maybe that's why they keep putting the yo. The Yah, before the breath. The Hawa say my name is, uh, you know, worship the breath, or is I am. <sighs> wow, the existence, the breath, the security, the secure breath. Every secure 
breath you got, every breath you take is your existence. Hawa is your secure breath, your breath of security, your foundational revelation, your revelational foundation. <laughs> A highly prominent name is that of Hawa. It's the most ancient name for the creator. So this is the most important part of this whole flow. Before they try to take us into the Yahweh's, Yahweh, future tense Yahs. If the most ancient name for the creator is Hawa, then that's the name, man. And they're going to say, well... Israel was then given a new name, and Yahweh, <laughs> like, Hawa didn't say, hey, here's a brand new name. Don't call me my old name. <laughs> Don't call me existence anymore, right? Call me the worship of existence. Call me the future of existence. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. If the ancient name is Hawa, then that's the name that we remember, because as time flowed on, and the world fell apart, right? It took the world falling apart for you not to call Hawa Hawa. But you know what? It's still in our place names. It's still in our greetings. Like in Hawaii, they say Aloha, which is just Aloha or El Hawa. Hawa is Hawa. Take me back to the O, right? Eloa or El Oa, the Hebrew name for God or the Creator. But then it says further, the biblical name for the personal God of Israel was Yahweh. Really? But Yahweh backwards is Ha or He Wa. <laughs> Stop the play. Stop the play, play. Even your hello. And we might think, oh, English spell hell. Every time you're saying hello, you're saying hell. That hell is L, my nugget. L O or L O I. Your hello is just Hebrew for greeting someone with existence, with the breath, with the security. Hello is L O. L O I. L O H. L O I. L O I. <laughs> Shout out to Chef Candy launching her beautiful meal prep and catering services for her Trinidadian, you know what I'm saying, Amaro Khan, you know what I'm saying, um, electric recipes, man, that we've been digging off for years and perfecting, and she's ready to launch her recipe books and everything. But she has her meal prep and catering services called You hella fresh because you know that's part of our lingo man you hella fresh man you but we're talking about the food you know being hella fresh but really it's el hawa fresh it's hello it's el hawa fresh <laughs> shout out to chef candy man we, we el hawa fresh man so look out for you hella fresh because we're talking hello el hawa <laughs> el hawa so what happened to the why and what's this got to do with the O? Take me back to the O. You got Cotton Ka Bob El Hawa, one of the most ancient excavated sites in Israel. El Hawa, God creator, is the key to a host of linguistic forms. While El, a common Semitic word for God, is well remembered in the Bible. Hawa, the ancient name for the creator, is not. <laughs> so if you don't remember the ancient name, or you think you got to replace it with a Y, just to make you know your tongue feel more uh, hijackable, you know what I'm saying? Then that's cool. But if the ancient name is the Ha, is the breath, why would you change the breath? Why take the breath away and give it a Ya? Why? Because there's a new name now. Hijack needs a new name because the OG Nagas don't remember the ancient love song. They learn to forget the old Owa. Who taught them to learn to forget the old Owa? Your Yahweh, Yahweh. So if the hijack's calling the creator Yah and Yahweh, you still going to call it Yah, Yahweh? 
the hijack ain't saying why <laughs> hijack saying yeah 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 and etymology is an explanation of defiance that's how you learn to forget the older why it has to be beat out of you you have to be invaded to start switching up your name for the creator but let's take it back to the o what's it got to do <laughs> With the O. This is beautiful though. The Awa, right? Agua, Awa, name in Ethiopia is also given as Ua, U A. If we vocalize O A or U A, we find ourselves making a W sound between the two vowels. Whoa, take me back to the O. So you telling us? They telling us, boss? Let's get it bigger. You telling us that the OA still makes the W sound between the... Uh, come on, man. So the OA is still the same WA as the U. -U -A. Okay. Because if we vocalize the OA or UA, we find ourselves making a W sound, man. Now you can look into these place names and see all the Hawas or Awas. So either you're going to have H-U-A, the indigenous will also put H-U-E or H-U-I, but it's all Hawa, Hawa, H-U-I, Solomon Islands, H-U-A. Even in China, which one about you got the Hawa An Ong, which is priest, or excuse me, king. So take me back to the O. So there are also many O-A or O-U-A. And James Adair just said they pronounced it O-E-A, right? Oh, man, this Zoom is crazy right now. It's tripping. <laughs> Japan, you got O-W-A. You got the Y by itself. You got the W-A, which, of course, they connect with the divine name. It's also the sixth letter in the Hebrew. You got the Y, Y, mountains in Udall. Oh, you got Hawa, Hawa, or H-U-A, H-U-E, forms in Mexico, like we said, the Hawa Mat. We're not making Hawa. We ain't going crazy. It's everywhere. You just been blind. We just been blind to it. <laughs> Hawaii, right? Ch the Chi. It's like we got the Chikora. You got the Chi Hawaii in Guatemala flow. Take me back to the O. We might have H O A. Same thing. Ooh, let's go Caroline, right? <laughs> let's go Caroline. You got the OA, you got the Scotland flow with the OA, you got the OUA, all this is Hawaii. When we talk OA, and I'm just assuming OEA is still the OA. So, James Adair, man, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> when you're talking OEA and then just putting the YA on it, just like that other author tried to give us a new name, give us Yawa. <laughs> nah, 
na na. The H or the OA or OEA is still the W sound, just like he said. Just like he said. Look at all these place names with the Hawa, man. Ain't that beautiful? Because the OA or UA, we find ourselves making a W sound, boss. So this is still Hawa. Just like you said, oh, Hawa just means salt. Nah, man. <laughs> We're talking why, and just like they say, why is the divine, the divine letters, right? Because the why, before they turn into a V-A-V, -V, which is W-A-W, -W, we're talking about the tent peg, the foundation to keep the tent. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40 talks about, you know what I'm saying, uh, this firmament flow, you know what I mean, and, you know, the... Shamayim, the heavens being stretched out like a tent, right? This tent is foundational with tent pegs. And this tent peg is letting you know this orientation, but it's also giving you foundation or security. <laughs> but first you need your breath and revelation from Big Mama. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 8, when you walk through the gate, through the door, Mama gives you the revelation. She gives you that look. She gives you that breath. You don't need the yoke. <laughs> to get the name, the yod comes way after you already have put your wall up, man. <laughs> now, the yod is all good. I rock with the yod because it is one of our letters. But their yod ain't your yod. This is what we've been saying. They created a reflection yod, right? They gave you a reflection yod. That's not your yod in your Hebrew. Their Yah connects to an explanation of defiance or dismissal. So they are defiant against your Hawa. So they put Yah Hawa or Yahweh. Yahweh spelled backwards is Ha Hawa. From the 1869 hypothetical reconstruction, hypothetical reconstruction of the tetragrammaton yod hey wah but it's just the hawa, <laughs> and the yod refers to worshiping hawa, but the name is I am. <laughs> Exodus, hawa tells Moses, I am sent you tell them i am has sent you i am is hey uh, in the strong concordance right h1961 but the hey uh, <laughs> is the older form because the hebrew verb hawa oh i can't make this up man <laughs> you just got it <laughs> multiple sources and you see it in the picto paleo alphabet this is the sixth and the seventh letter. After you walk through the door, you get your mama, your breath. Ha, you get your foundation, your father. Wow, you get your framer, you get your shaper. Then you can eat because Hawa is earlier than Haya. So you got to come back home. How long are you going to be ignorant, man? We was all ignorant. <laughs> we was all in the dark, right? We all have to investigate. We all have to grow. You're going to stop growing because you don't want to be wrong. You're going to stop growing because of your pride, your ego, or you're going to take it back to the oak. <laughs> you're going to go to the earlier form. Hawa. In the sense of the one who is the existing. Hawa means to exist, but it's your breath. It's really referring to the one who is the breath and is the existing which is the creator God. so by the time they put their yas and their explanations of defiance on it God. by the time they put their defiance on your wa and your wa is your father <laughs> your security that's letting you know that they are defiant against your that they are defiant against our 
security. Yahoo, 1900s, man, 1812, man, and the 1812 goes right back to the War of 1812 and Tecumseh, man, where the switch happened, the shift happened, away from your breath, away from your security. So James Adair, he taking it back to adding something to it. He's adding the yo. <laughs> and we're just saying that we see clear. There they go, there they go. That when you walk through the door, <laughs> you get your ha and wa, period. You don't get your yad, hawa. And if this ain't the yah, then where's your yah? Where are you getting it from? Yah means to worship, to throw, to work. Is it work Hawa? Worship Hawa? Throw Hawa? You think you need that? <laughs> to get your food, my naga? Your nourishment? To cut off your hijack? To have a seventh day and cut it off? To have the seventh letter? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is your Zod? To get your Zaya? To get your food? You think you need your Ya to get your nourishment? You need your uh, wah, to get your food, to get your nourishment, to cut off this hijack. It's right there in the seven, first seven letters of the Hebrew root. James Adair, you know, ain't going to see it all the way clear. He ain't going to see it all the way through. He's on the other side of the wall. <laughs> He's with the white walkers in there, man. You know what I'm saying? You need to come home and see clear. Then you can add your your tet, your yad, your cough, right? But it's in order for a reason to get to your towel, to get to your towel. Wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> for the dismount. Man, we surfing wave all through this legend of the Jews. Man, by Lewis Ginsburg, man, and uh, got a lot of drop. I mean, we can continue to connect in our investigation. I'm so grateful to you, Yosef Durrell, and his recon, man, to bring us back to this text, man. And we have barely skimmed the surface of this thing, but I mean, digging on Dawi. You know, last time we did a dismount digging on, you know, some of the, um, you know, last parts of this David flow. But we're going to take it back to the, oh, <laughs> we're going to take it back to the Obed, <laughs> take it back to Oth Othniel, man, <laughs> take it back to the top. Even before we get this drop, there's a couple that I want to dig on. Let's see. Let's go to 500, man. Let's, let's start here, man. Let's start here, man. Because I think this is awesome, man. I think this is awesome right here. And this is, this is how I want to dismount. Hawa tries to comfort Moses concerning his death. Let's get it. Because remember, Moses wasn't allowed to get to the promised land, and we don't have any backstory or context. These translators don't give us nothing else, right? And the KJV. So we have to, you know, see what clues we have into what really happened to get an inner static. But so let's do some recon. That Moses might not take his approaching end too much to heart. <laughs> Hawa tried to comfort him by pointing him, pointing out to him that in his lifetime he had received such distinctions from his creator as no man before him. And that still greater distinctions awaited him in the future world. 
Awah said, Does not thou remember the great honor I showed you? Thou didn't say to me, Arise, and I arose. Thou said, Turn about, and I turned about. For thy sake, too, did I invert the order of heaven and earth. Whoa! Did you know that Hawa inverted the order of heaven and earth? What does it mean? For the order of heaven is to send down dew and rain, and earth's order is to produce bread. But thou didst say to me, I do not wish it so, but bid heaven to send down bread and earth to bring forth water. We're talking that mem sauce. We're talking those fountains, those springs. And I acted in accordance with thy wish. I caused bread to rain from heaven and the well sprang up. <laughs> thou didst say, if the Lord make a new thing, and the ground opened her mouth and swallowed them up, swallowed them up, then you shall understand that the Lord has sent me, and I fulfilled your wish, and it swallowed them. I had also spoken, he that sacrificed unto any God, save unto Hawah only, shall be utterly destroyed. But when Israel sinned with the golden calf, and I meant to deal with them according to my words, thou wouldst not let me, Moshe saying, Pardon, I pray thee, the iniquity of this people, and I forgave them as thou didst ask me. More than this, the Torah is named after me. It is the Torah of Hawah. But I named it after your name, saying, It is the Torah of my servant Moses. The children of Israel also are named after me, for unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants, but I call them after your name. I distinguish thee still more, for just as there is neither food nor drink for me, so also didst thou stay in heaven forty days and forty nights. And in all that time didst neither eat bread nor drink water. I am a wah, and see, I made thee a god to Pharaoh. I have prophets, and thou hast a prophet. For I said to thee, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. Whoa. He says, man, I made you like me, man. Like, again, no being may see me, but thee too did I make so that the people were afraid to come near you. And as I said to thee, thou shalt see my back, but my face shall not be seen. So too did the people see the back of you. I glorify the Torah with 22 letters. And with all these letters that I glorify you, I sent you to Pharaoh. And thou didst lead Israel out of Egypt. Through thee did I bestow, bestow the Sabbath upon Israel and the law of circumcision. I gave thee the Ten Commandments. I covered thee with the cloud. I gave thee the two tables of stone which thou did break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made thee unique in the world. I gave thee the Torah as an inheritance and honored thee more than all the 70 elders. Did we get the Kokor flow? Well, there were 70 kidnapped. Hmm. Did they kidnap the elders? <laughs> Moses had to acknowledge the extraordinary marks of honor had been his. He said, Lord of the world, a wah wah. <laughs> Thou did set me on high and did bestow upon me so many benefits that I cannot enumerate one of a thousand. And all the worlds know that thou did exalt me and honor me. These are facts. <laughs> and all the world knows as well that thou art the one power. The only one in your world and thy world. That there is none beside thee. And that there is nothing like thee. Thou did create above those above and those below. Thou art the beginning 
and the end. Who can enumerate your deeds of glory? Do one of these, I beseech thee, that I may pass over Jordan. Hawah said, let it suffice. Speak no more to me of this matter. It is better for thee to die here than that thou should cross the Jordan and die in the land of Israel. There, in a tomb fashioned by men, on a briar made by men, by the hands of men, wouldst thou be buried. But now shalt thou be buried in the tomb fashioned by Hawa, on a briar made by Hawa, and shall be buried by the hands of Hawa. O oh, my son Moses, much honor had been stored up for thee in the future world future world cause for thou wilt take part in all the delights of paradise where are prepared three hundred and ten worlds what does it mean there's three hundred and ten worlds beyond a pole what are we talking about three hundred and ten worlds which i have created for every righteous man that through love of me devoted himself to the Torah. So you saying we don't got to fight over no small bit of land and America and Africa. <laughs> you saying there's 310 worlds created for righteous flock, righteous servants, cold keeping Nagas. You saying Hawa made a future world The delights of paradise where are prepared 310 worlds for every pious naga that through love of me, how do you love the creator? You listen, you hearken, you keep the commandments, right? Devoted himself to the Torah. And as in this world, I appointed you over the 60 myriads of Israel. So in the future world shall I appoint thee over 55 myriads of righteous men. Thy days, O Moses, will pass when thou art dead, but thy light will not fade, for thou will never have need of the light of sun or moon or stars. So it says in Deuteronomy 34 that when Moses died, you know, his his eyes were not dim. His life force was never abated, unabated. It was never lessened. So how do you die if your eyes are never dim and your light force, your light is never lessened, man? That means you're in suspended animation like the Preston. <laughs> you're in the seat of survival, Jack. For thou will never have need of the light of the sun and the moon and the stars, nor will thou require raiment or shelter or oil for your head or shoes for your feet. For my majesty will shine before thee. My radiance will make thy face beam. My sweetness will delight thy palate. The carriages of my equipage shall serve as vehicles for thee. Whoa. I got carriages for you, man. And one of my many scepters upon which is engraved the ineffable name, one that I had employed in the creation of the world, shall I give to you the image of which I had already given thee in this world. Come, come. God. He goes into the intercession from, I mean, this is a big document with a bunch of drop, but one of the many scepters upon which thing is, this ineffable name is engraved is the same scepter that Adam had when, you know, he was in the garden. You know, Adam held that creation staff, same sapphire staff that's mentioned in the book of Jasher. That was passed all the way, you know, to Jacob and all the way to, to Judah. You know what I'm saying? It was passed all the way to David. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, 
Moses got it because uh, Jethro had gotten it, you know what I'm saying? And Jethro had it in his garden, and Moses plucked it out the garden, just like he, King Arthur's story, where he got the, uh, you know, the, the sword, you know, everyone was trying to pull out the sword. But Moses was able to pull the staff out the garden. And all the Kenites were trying to do it. All the mighty men were trying to do it. Moses saw it in the garden and he just plucked it out because it was for him. And that's when Jethro gave him Zipporah as his wife. Let's keep going, man. Let's check on uh, this one right quick. Let's dig on some things. For the this, man. All right, I'm just jumping in here, man. I'm just belly flopping. Israel received the command to make war upon the Midianites at the same time as that to fight the Moabites. But whereas Moses at once waged war against Midian, it was not until David's time that a relentless war was waged against Moab. There were several reasons why the Midianites were to receive their punishment before the Moabites. Firstly, Moabite, Moab's hatred against Israel was not quite without foundation. For although the Israelites had not attacked them in war, still they had inspired them with great fear by pillaging the Moabite region. Hence the Moabites tried by every means to rid of Israel. Midian, on, on the other hand, had no cause for undertaking hostilities against Israel, and yet they are not only joined, they not only joined the Moabites, but outdid them in their hatred against Israel. They were confederate against Israel, man. They saying they was afraid because of this and all this, man. They, you know, <laughs> they were afraid for a reason. Furthermore, Moab wanted to kill Israel, but Midian wanted to tempt them to sin, which is worse than death. Of course, if you get these Nagas out of coal, that's worth that's worse than just killing them. Because if they're out of coal, <laughs> that means they're going to be punished for, you know what I mean, what do I say, uh, third and fourth generation? <laughs> so just get them out of sin. Let the creator punish them, you know what I mean? So this is what they're doing. So it says tempting them to sin was worse than death. For Israel, the delay in punishing Moab also corresponded in other ways to God's plan for the Moabite Ruth was destined to become the mother of the destiny dynasty of David. Remember, she was like the one righteous Moabite <laughs> out of all these Moabites. So Hawa spared Ruth and made her, you know, gave her this honor of being uh, David's grandma or something. So. Uh, let's see, destined to become the mother of the dynasty of David. Hence, Hawa said to Israel, quote, wait yet a while in this manner of war, matter of war against the Moabites. I have lost something valuable among them. Wow. So, man, shout out to Ruth, man. She was the value. Hawa said, I lost something valuable amongst the Moabites, as soon as I have found it, you shall avenge yourselves of them. So Hawa held off the destruction of Moab until he found what he was looking for with Ruth. Ruth was the value <laughs> that spared Moab for a period of time, which is why they're always trying to work their way back to being related to David through Ruth. Man, y'all better stop it. <laughs> she was giving Ahab because of her code keeping, man. So if you want to be valuable amongst the Moabites, you better start keeping the code like Ruth did. Con, con. All right, it's belly flopping. Let's, uh, let's get it right here, man. What's over here? Okay. Okay, let's jump in here. Let's talk about the sons of Moses. Ah, the Levites 
who survived the carnage, the sons of Moses, they were bit their own fingers off. And when they were asked to play, they showed their tyrants mutilated hands. Because <laughs> they wanted them to play the strings of the harp. So they rather bite their fingers off than play some holy music for these hijacks, man, in Babylon with which it was impossible to manipulate their harps. At the fall of night, a cloud descended and enveloped the sons of Moses and all who belonged to them. They were hidden from their enemies while their own way was illuminated by a pillar of fire, right? We're talking about Exodus. The cloud and the pillar vanished at break of day. And before the sons of Moses lay a tract of land bordered by the sea, so it vanished at the break of day and before the sons of Mo Moses lay a track of land bordered by the sea on three sides. For their complete protection, Hawa made the river Sambanya, which we read about in Lost Tribes and Promised Lands by Ronald Sanders, right? And we read, we got some more drop along the years, man, these many years about this waterless sea. <laughs> that flows for six days and rests on the Sabbath. So they call it the Sabbath River or the San Banyan River, a.k.a. Sabbath River, because it flows six days and it rests on the seventh day. This river is full of sand and stones, and on the six working days of the week, they tumble over each other with such vehemence that the crash and the roar are heard far and wide. But on the Sabbath, on the Shabbat, the tumultuous river subsides into quiet as a guard against trespasses on that day. A column of cloud stretches along the whole length of the river, and none can approach the Samanyan within three miles. Wow. Edged in as they are, the sons of Moses yet communicate with their brethren, the tribes of Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, who dwell near the banks of the Samania, carrier pigeons bear letters hither and thither, so they communicate through carrier pigeons, man. <laughs> In the land of the sons of Moses, there are nothing but clean animals. In every respect, the inhabitants lead a holy, pure life worthy of their ancestor, Moshe, man. So, we're going to get back on the Sam and Yah. We're going to get back in the Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. We're going to get back on this Moshe tribe, this tribe of Moses that uh, was a Benjamin of Tadula. Uh, no, uh, Eldad. Eldad. Yeah, Eldad was digging on this Sons of Moses as well, man. So Eldad the Danai, the Eldani, right? Hi, man. All right. <laughs> All right, yourself, we worked our way back to the top, man. Taking it back to the OA. Oh, wow. <laughs> we worked our way back for a stack. Oh, wow. Right, so we talk about David's birth. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about the elect. David, the elect of Hawa, was descended from a family which itself belonged to the elect of Israel, those ancestors of his who are enumerated in the Bible by name are all of them men of distinguished excellence. So all these ancestors of David are distinguished excellence. His dad, Jesse, is one of the four Israelites who died without sin. <laughs> so He's one of the four sinless men. Besides, David was a descendant of Miriam. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. What? Right? What? The sister of Moses. So if David was a descendant of Miriam, then he's a descendant of Moses. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this ain't no play play. And so the strain of royal aristocracy was reinforced by the priestly aristocracy, 
nor was David the first of his family to occupy the throne of a ruler. His great father Boaz was one and the same person with his Ibzah, remember Zion is Zion, the judge of Bethlehem, Othniel too, Othniel too, the first judge in Israel after the death of Joshua and Caleb, the brother of Othniel, were connected with David's family. As examples of piety and virtue, David had his grandfather, and more particularly his father before him. His grandfather's whole life was a continuous service of Hawa. Whence his name Obed. Take me back to the O. The servant and his father Jesse <laughs> was one of the greatest scholars of his time, and one of the four, <laughs> one of the four who died wholly untainted by sin. And we got that before in another source. So it ain't no play play. When we talk Killian, we're talking about ancient Israelites who died without sin. If Hawah had not ordained death for all the descendants of our first parents after their fall, Jesse would have continued to live forever. He's an immortal Naga. It's just that Hawah had ordained death for all the descendants of our first parents after their fall. Their fall, being out of cold, created this death situation. Even in Lord of the Rings, these elves say, we have no word for death. There was no th such thing as death before. Before the fall, there was no such thing as death. You were living forever. As it was, he died at the age of 400. And then a violent death by the hand of a Moabite king in whose care David, trusting in the ties of kinship between the Moabites and the seed of Ruth, left his family when he was fleeing before Saul. Jesse's piety would not go unrewarded. In the messianic time, he would be one of the eight princes to rule over the world. Whoa. In spite of his piety, Jesse was not <clears throat> always proof against temptation. One of his slaves caught his fancy and he would have entered into illicit relations with her. Had his wife Nazbot, the daughter of Adiel, not frustrated the plan, she disguised herself as a slave and Jesse, deceived by the ruse, met his own wife. So, you know... <laughs> You know, she, the sister, you know what I'm saying, made sure he remained righteous in her wise eyes. That's amazing, man. Shout out to the queen. We don't we do not do this by ourselves, man. The child born by Nazba was given out as the son of the free slave so that the father might not discover the deception practiced upon him. This child was David. Huh. So David was born. They thought he was just like a bastard child. But in reality, he was the true heir. In a measure, David was indebted for his life to Adam. What? Adam, Adam? David was indebted to Adam for his life. Let's read about it for the dismount. Let's get it, man. <laughs> Remember, man, we on a warpath, man. And the Presta series is the search for all the priests, right? The Jesses, the Moseses. The Davids, right? Let's get it. At first, only three hours of existence had been allotted to him. Three hours of existence was allotted to David? Why? When God, when Hawa caused all future generations to pass and review before Adam, he besought Hawa to give David 70 of the thousand years destined to him. So Adam was supposed to get a thousand years. He he besought Hawa to give David seventy of his thousand years. So Adam must have passed that like nine hundred and thirty. <laughs> he gave David seventy, even though he was only going to get three hours of existence. A deed of gift 
side and by wah and the angel Metatron, we're talking Enoch, was drawn up. Seventy years were legally conveyed. So they made an actual contract and seventy years were legally conveyed or given from to David and in accordance with Adam's wishes, beauty, dominion, and poetical gift went with them. <laughs> so David had Adam's beauty, his dominion, which makes him king of the earth, right? <laughs> and his poetic or his psalms, right? His gift, his singing, like his talent. All this is connected with Adam himself and was given as a gift. 70 of his 1,000 years, my life. Who? Oh, who? <laughs> It's Preston John, man. Hey. We did it again, guys. <laughs> yeah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> we did it again. It ain't easy. You know? You see clearly, you know, they can't keep putting blinders on a knock. And we see the more and more war clearly. We see why they up against the Shikamaga Cherokee. They see what this Kokora, you know, we see what this Kokora is all about. We see this Kokora connects us with promised land. We're seeing clearly. And if we see clearly, that means we got to see the Drakkar. <laughs> and love to um the improbable dreamer, aka Jacob on IG. This is from 1946 dictionary. Dragon, now rare. <laughs> now rare. Now rare does not mean not exist, baby. And what else does it say? A huge serpent, fabulous animal. Generally a monster's wing, skelly serpent, lizard, soria. Lord of the Rings, the bad guy, evil spirit is named Sauron or something, right? <laughs> a fierce or very strict person. Don't that sound like the 1828 Dictionary of Dragon? A fierce or violent person, especially a woman, the one. Then we got the plants, several plants of the Arab family probably associated with dragons. So these plants are associated with the dragons. A word used in the authorized version to translate several Hebrew forms, such some of them are translated by jackal or serpent, like the tan tanine drop, right? The tans and the tannins. So a lot of these jackal interpretations in the Bible, they're just talking about dragons. Oh, your, your land's going to be a den of jackals. We're just talking about dragons, whether we're talking positive frequency dragons or negative frequency dragons or positive frequency angels or negative frequency angels. We're talking dragons. And a lot of this serpent talk, especially in the Garden of Eden, where one lost his wings and was forced or cursed to crawl on its belly. Body back, body back. <laughs> For the illusion. That's not a serpent in the Garden of Eden. That's a dragon in the Garden of Eden that lost its wings. And now it's rare. <laughs> or now it's just rare for them to use serpent, you know. <laughs> but I think we see clear, man. We're going to get back on the Shakur flow. Shakira, Shakira. Yeah. Southeastern, huh? Okay. We're going to get back on this, man, because we got a lot more digging to do with this abundant land of natural resources as long as we understand that this Korah is the car. And the she, well, the she connect to the Alme, the she connect to the Western Shashia. The 
XIA. She, she, the she connect with the Tangu. Twelve oh six, Timujin was formally proclaimed Genghis Khan, ruler of the Mongols, marking the official start of the Mongol Empire. So, their whole new start of uh, Tartaria, the whole new new Tartaria, new Mongol flow happened after the twelve oh six situation, after uh, this Battle of the Burning Sand situation. Man, these Western Shia are the Tangu and Tagru is Prester John and in 1203 Tagru was defeated by Temujin and this is what I'm saying this was the marker after this 1203 you got gang is going crazy <laughs> now he's raiding the Western Shia which is just the X or the XI where X marks the spot Now Angus is going crazy on the sheet. Next time we get more about the Battle of the Burning Sands, though, because, you know, that was the official war that happened, man, with this Genghis compressed to John flow in the Mongol, his story, man. Hey, to all my cons, man, suiting up and choosing up. We only made it this far because of y'all, because of y'all. Incredible recon. The spring of water, man, that y'all just keep, uh, you know, letting that water flow and continue for all the tribe, man, all the reconners, all the stuff y'all dropping. Love to Cootie Mayo, man. Get in the classroom of Cootie Mayo. You're going to get a lot of a frequency, man, a lot of a lot of tribing up in that classroom. And my naga, you're going to get, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> A lot of this drop, man, that's going to connect what I'm bringing here, you know, with a lot of these great books he's reading, man. <laughs> he's connecting also <clears throat> how they are turning us into superheroes and how even their myth mythos like Mars and Venus and Saturn are all connected to actual Hebrew characters, real Hebrew people. <laughs> and Jacob and Israel. You know, they turn that into Saturn, right? They turn it into these other things, you know what I'm saying? So they're flipping it and worshiping and deifying our ancestors, man. Our priest cons, our priest kings, our queens. They turn Sheba to Shiva, right? They turn all this stuff. So you are the originals and Hawaii is the originator. 1207 gangs led another raid into the Western Shi, invading the Ordos Loop and sacking the Wu La Ha. Ha. Wa. <laughs> another Ha. These Ha's are the Ha's, man. The Ha. All this is Hebrew talk, man. We're going to get back to it, man. I can keep going for another five, six hours. You already know, man. Cause I really want to get in the Battle of Burning Sand. But I'll save it for the next drop. I'll see y'all in Presto 1. 46 dropping it like it hot because the drop don't stop man i truly love y'all all ai all to the creator man to our power we keeping the code we breaking the spell so we can search for our calm we and you know the shepherd can have a flock and the flock can have the shepherd once again man you got the links man i need you to stay up i need you to suit up and for real, for real, I need you to choose up. And if you made it this far, man, in the year of the dragon, if you made it to the dismount, go ahead and put nine green dragon emojis in the comments, man. If I, if I see comments with nine green dragons, I know you made it to the dismount. You are the wave surfers, and we are surfing the wave, man. Till we become the water, man. This is the year of the dragon, man. You're going to start seeing clearly Diddy's are going to be Diddying. You know what I'm saying? Hollywood's falling. And the currency of the truth is at an all-time high. The value of, of the truth of currency, man. Nagas is uniting, right? My, my, my Nagas and these gangs are figuring it out, man. Because it's not in our heart to slay each other no more. Because we got the heart. We got the code on our heart bone, man. We being code keepers. 
We got more than 500 cold keepers now, man. <laughs> the cold keepers have, you know, reawakened, man, are reuniting, reconfiguring. We're getting a brand new configuration for the cons, man. And it's all happening. And it's all right. The water, my nuggets. Hey, this is your time, man. This is your wave to serve. You know what I'm saying? This is for you. Hey, keep the water flowing. Keep the fire burning. And keep the cold, man. KTC. It make Joey. And stay dripping in that. And that mem sauce. Say it with me, cuz. Allow. Ah. Ooh.